Yeah. 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 Being 6.30, uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, there's a few items we want to take care of before the walk-in, so we'll try to move those along as quickly as possible. Um, first item in the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, next, number three, is the Hawker Peddler's License. Is uh, this is uh, oh, come up, that's right. <laughs> so, I uh, you, Shawana brought this to my attention. Sit right down, my friend. How are you? Hi, I'm Jack Thompson. Yes, Jack, tell me what you want to do. I want to um, move that microphone a little closer to you so we can so those people at, tele at home can hear you. I want a permit for the farmer's market. For, okay, to do what? Um, sell crayons. Really, let me see what kind of crayons. We have crayons that are shaped in different. We have different shaped crayons, and they're multicolored. Could you bring them up here? Let the board see those. Yeah. Let me see them. I'm interested. Do you make those yourself? Yes. You wow. do. And these are crayons, huh? Yes. Oh. If he asks how they're made, don't tell him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> tell him it's a secret. Coke secret formula. <laughs> Great the different colors. Secret colors. Formula. I like the wrapping, so that's good. And you you, was, you want to sell these at the farmer's market? Yeah. Okay. Have you have you sold them before, or have you tried selling them before? Um, once or twice. Once or twice, huh? Great idea. So you want Great. to set up a little booth there and learn how business works? Yeah. That'd be fun. Great idea. There you go, Jack. Well, I. Uh, does the board have any questions? I might have. You might, Sean has a couple. Jack, uh, how old are you? I'm eight. Eight years old, wow. And you, did you think of this idea all by yourself? Yeah. That's great. That's a lot of hard work. But I, are you up for it? When are you going to start? After, after school, of course, right? Yeah. Great, great. Well, what are you going to buy with all the money you make? Um. <laughs> we were thought that far ahead, have we? education, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't, don't worry. Think yeah. about it. You're going to save You'll it. You'll do great. How much, how much does it cost, Jack? For um, one dollar per pack. Wow, Very that's reasonable. a bargain. That's good. That's uh, great. Mr. Norton. Yes. Um, after the discussion, maybe we should have this one as a, uh, as its own motion as opposed to going in with everything else? That'd be fine. Yep. Is that okay? I think we should. This, uh, is, this is the entrepreneurship that I was talking about the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Jack. Exactly what we yeah, want. I'd love to hear, hear a uh, motion just on this. Sure. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a Hawker Peddler's License to Jack Thompson doing business as PJ's Crayons to sell homemade, multicolored crayons. Second. Motion's been made and is seconded. Any discussion from the floor? Any customers? <laughs> Staying in order. Sisters at all? Are they, uh... All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck. Good luck. Excellent. Good well done. Good job, Jack. Well Good done. Good job. Thank you. We'll see you this summer. Thank you. 
Linda's. You got a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody else picking up a, a reverb on the uh, microphones here? John? We're getting a weird sort of echo up here. John now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Hi, See thank you. you. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. My name is Linda Francis. I'd like to sell my jewelry at the farmer's market. I make sterling silver, semi-precious, Mother's Day gifts. That kind of thing. Okay. You've done this before at, my, at Farmer's Markets? Uh, I have not. This will be my okay. first time. Okay. Good, uh -huh. luck. Good luck with it. Thank you. Um, discussion from the board. So are you a corporation? Are you, is this a, do you have a shop or something, or is this you do it on your own? This is what I do it after the kids go to bed <laughs> in my house. <laughs> Great. Good for you. Love a motion. Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a hawker, hawker peddler's license to Linda J. Francis to sell uh, silver jewelry. Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Um, this is the fire department race. One How more are you? Joe. Nope. One yeah. more. Yeah. Nope. Did I miss one, one more hawker? All right. Go ahead. Uh, Ed Sylvia. Oh. I'm here for Ed. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. How are you? How are you? Good. Good. And you wish Ed wants to do what? He has a farm in Dighton. Okay. He does the Milton Farmers Market, the Winchester Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. I do other farmers markets, so I kind of yep. got him to come over to Situate. They got a great farm. Um. I have a list of all the things he has. He has potted herbs, apples, peaches, plums, nectarines, all the vegetables you can think of, and just no berries. No berries. And no competition. Great farm. <laughs> yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, further discussion from the board? Uh, any discussion from the board? Questions? If not, a motion? Move the board Suckman vote to grant a Harkis Peddler's license to Edward L. Sylvia doing business as Dighton Farm to sell vegetables, fruits, and plants at the North Situate Town owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays from May 1st, 2010 to October 31st, 2010. Licenses have the temporary waiver of the 15 minute rule, which is one of our policies. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Um, is that the end of the? Yes. Yep. Bucket <coughs> pedal. Okay. Now. <laughs> you jog on. How do I? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Just give us a brief update, if you would, on the. Um, on Pat the Riley from Situate Firefighters uh, Union. We run a benefit road race every year on Mother's Day. Uh, this year, it's benefiting the friends of Eric Donovan, uh, and we are here to finalize the application for our permit for that uh, 5K road race. Very successful race every year. Every year, very successful. Uh, sometimes pretty stormy, rainy. Well, the weather usually that, doesn't work out. For some reason, that has sort of a bad track record, I think, as far as weather, doesn't it? Yeah, I usually get some waves crashing over you on yeah. the finish line. Well, that adds to it. Discussion. How Who's many years? Run? Oh. From the board. How many are you going to run? I'm this? doing the uh, marathon. Right? You, know, you okay. must be kidding. <laughs> that, was, that was last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how many years has this race been going on? Uh, so this will be the 17th year. Wow. Great. And a great charity. I don't know if, if yep. there's any other place. Is there a website or something for, uh, for Eric? For Eric or I believe he has a Facebook page he? Uh, on there. Yeah. Uh, they've made one up. Um, and then the application is on our web page. Right. Uh, no. motion? Motion, love one. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a special event permit to the Situate Firefighters Local 1464 for the Situate Fire Benefit Road Race to be held on Sunday, May 9th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon and in accordance with all conditions set forth by the Police, Fire, Inspections, Public Works, Health, and Recreation Departments. I'll second that. Motion will be made and seconded. Further discussion? I'm going to run it, so there you go, guys. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
That, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And you know what? I do, just one other quick comment on this. This this race goes. Yeah. You want to just say where it runs? I know it doesn't go down Front Street. It, yeah. It uh, it starts on Bailey's Causeway and Minot. Uh, goes through the Minot neighborhood out uh, to the Glades Estate and uh, comes back and ends uh, pretty much in front of the old hotel out in uh, Minot on Glades Minot. Road. So all down the beach there? Yeah, along the beach out into the estate. About the only time of the year you can get all the way out there. Right. It's a great run, actually. I've run it before. It is, and it's beautiful. It's a great day. Very nice, nice event. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Uh, Marianne. Good point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. How are you? All right. And I'm Marianne Fitzmaurice, the principal of Haverly School, and I'm here to talk to the board of a selectman. Um, in losing Elaine Shea, we've lost both a good, a good friend and a dedicated and talented teacher who taught in the Situate Public Schools for 17 years. When Elaine would meet with me to discuss her latest scan and her next treatment plan, she always set treatment schedules that least impacted her school day. Um, she often remarked to me that she didn't want cancer to define her. She was a teacher first and not a cancer patient. At the end of January, when her prognosis was six months, Elaine, true to her determination, only get, would not let the cancer define her and only gave it one month. I had the honor to work with Elaine for the past seven years at Haverly School, and she set an example of true dedication and professionalism. Her generosity, her professional collaboration, her great perspective, her ability to focus on teaching and not her pain, her sense of humor are all Elaine's legacy she left to us. Her other legacy is to the many students she instilled the determination and the skill to overcome their disabilities and be successful. To paraphrase a former student of hers, she never gave up on them. I hope that we will be able to keep her legacy alive as we continue to serve the students of Situate. Her family has generously asked to create a garden outside her, the area of her classroom at Haverly. As you can see in some of the pictures that I gave you, it's a very undeveloped old, um, old wooden picnic table there right now. Um, they have proposed doing an all-purpose game-type picnic table for the students to use during the lunches with cobblestones, a bench, and a weeping cherry tree, and a garden. And I'm asking the Board of Sen Selectmen's approval to go ahead and enhance that area with the funds that were given in memory of Elaine Shea. Great. Thank you. Uh, just one comment. Based on the outpouring of uh, condolences, uh, when Mr. Shea died, I can som somewhat feel the, the the importance that she was to the school. Before we go, Jamie, would you like to say anything? I know you're here tonight in support yeah, of this. I, I think that, uh, you know, this has been a very difficult year for the district. We've lost two really uh, valuable and tremendous educators, and uh, both whose, whose legacy is their caring and concern for the kids and providing a, a nurturing environment. And this, I think, is a, a perfect tribute for what Elaine stood for, and I uh, wholeheartedly support what they're, what they're doing. It's a little sensitive to me because I lost my mom to cancer. who was a teacher in a similar fashion in the middle of a year, and uh, uh, it always touches. So I will tell you that she was a valued member of the family and uh, uh, is well missed here in Adelaide and in the district. Thank you. Comments from the board? Great idea. Great idea. Motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the permission for the use of town-owned property for the installation of a memorial garden at the Hadley School, Elementary School, in memory of Elaine Par uh, Paradise. Paradise Shea. Okay. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. We hope to start very quickly so that the students, the sixth graders Let's before see. they leave, can help do some of the gardening and everything by June. Thank right. you very much. Marianne, you take this. Okay. You can uh, Marianne, will there be some sort of marking, establishing who it's in memory I of, or some little, the bench, little, the bench. bench. good, excellent. Yeah. Yep, that that's excellent. Thank yep, thank you very much. Jamie, thanks. Uh, Lawson Tower Memorial. Dave Ball.
Good evening. Dave, good evening. How you doing? Good. <clears throat> if you just give us a brief update on sure. your plans. Um, as you know, Paul Miles was uh, very involved in the, uh, t especially the town side of historical preservation for the society. Uh, he was bird dogging uh, most of the repair work at, at the town on historical sites. And his, his especially, uh, he especially was uh, fond of Lawson Tower, acted as the clerk of the works when the tower was re-shingled and also when the bells were removed and restored. The 2008 annual town report, I have a copy of it right here, I'm sure I've seen it, um, had a dedication to him um, with the color photograph. It, I gave the board a copy, but this is what it looks like. And what we're talking about doing is using the text that Sheila Manning from um, the town administrator's office wrote with just a few changes and also the, uh, the photograph of Paul in front of the tower uh, in a memorial area that will be on the left side of the tower inside of the fence kind of facing the Erdman School area. This is all part of the hardscape work that's going mm -hmm. on there right now that, uh, that we're right, right in the middle of at this point in time. The society will pay for the entire project. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay. From the board, discussion? Done. My only question has nothing to do with the memorial, Dave. I guess it's the fence. What, what's the need for the fence, the chain link fence around the building? Is it, that's number one. I guess the sec, second question I had is, is there any way of being able to put something, a fence, if there's a need for a fence, at least something that's going to be, I mean, lower or something, in the future, not now. I, I realize cost, but I'm just thinking like, you know. We have had many discussions about the fence. Uh, obviously, it's providing protection for the tower. Uh, it would be nice to replace it with something that looks better. Uh, we've talked about that. When the Board of Selectmen voted the hardscape and landscape funding for what's going on there now, uh, that came out of, by the way, the, the train historic account. Um, the total amount of money was voted was 35000 The hardscape work is going to be about twenty five. The society, by the way, will probably end up having to put into the whole project about ten to 15000 uh, to get the thing done the way we want it. Um, I don't know what the cost of the fence would be, but it, it would be a good <coughs> many thousand dollars. It, it's, it's something that we've talked about. If we ever get to that point, we would certainly come to the town. But you're right. I mean, it, it doesn't look great, but we need the security for the, for the tower. Further discussion on the memorial? Just a quick question. Dave, I, I read it's a garden and a plaque. Is, is the picture going to be a photograph? I'm just wondering over years what what will happen. It'll be it'll be it'll be a, it'll be a plaque that will be on a pedestal. It'll be a kind of an angle like this. It'll be roughly 14 by 20 something, maybe maybe a little bit smaller than so, that. So something in, in in set in the garden. Right. And is it is it a paper photograph? I'm just wondering if it's gonna if age is gonna deteriorate or is, no, is it going to be? I've, I've talked to. A, company in Cohasset that does this very kind of, as a matter of fact, they've done some for the Harbor Masters um, walk area down on Cole Parkway. It, so they'll it, put it on some bronze type of... So it will be probably done out of fiberglass or some kind of material that will stand up for many, many years. But it will look very similar to, to this right here. Huh. But it will be bigger. It will be, be a color photograph, this, this exact photograph that was taken by you know, Kevin Morrow. Um, most of this text, but it'll be something that isn't going to be affected by exterior weather conditions. And the garden is about how big? It's smaller, like the size of that table, or, so, or is it? Uh... It'll be bigger than that. It's part of the whole landscape plan that's there. Okay. Uh, I have the plan if you'd like to see it. I'm fine with it. No, I tried. I just didn't. Do you want a motion, Mr. Chair? Love a motion. Move the board select and vote to grant permission for the use of town-owned property for the installation of a memorial at the base of Lawson Town. Second. Further discussion from the board? From the floor? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, do you have two copies of that? I'd like to look at that after the meeting. Or is, it, is that your only copy of the plan? That's the only copy yeah. I have, but if you, I can leave it with you. And I'll leave it in with uh, Kim. There have been some modifications, but that's generally the idea. Great. Yeah. Uh, agenda item number seven is the discussion of vote a suspension of a sewer betterment. Is there anyone here from Stevenman Farm? No. I'd vote to postpone it and to the next. No, we got to no. go forward with it. Go forward with it. So can, After sure. reading, oh, I was just going to maybe. Right. I, had I had spoken to you earlier yep. today. Could maybe Tricia explain a little bit how that might work? It's can you say any or, or no? I mean, you're after reading it, I think it's I think it's just a or, or Kim, maybe oh, you no, know, no, that's not the um, you know, it's just a Deferral. because they're an agricultural right. entity, right. they are entitled to Deferral. not or to defer the the betterment. So. Yes. Right. So when they, if at, at some time they sell that property, mm -hmm. whoever buys the property would then have to pay the betterment if they, yep. when they hook up to it. So yep. or, it's really just a law. Or keep it as a farm. It's just yeah. general law. Right. Yeah. So if they lose right. that agricultural status. Right. So the statute provides that if they provide application and request to you, you can so vote to do it as long as it remains for agricultural or horticultural yeah. purposes. Yeah. Right. It seems, it seems to me to be relative, based on this material, relatively straightforward based on basically it's Mass General Law 61A. Yeah, 61A. It's, it's yes. the applicant only needed to write the letter. Yep, um, requesting it. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so can I just ask one follow-up yep. question? Sure. If there are three, three, four form A lots down the road, that's three or four tie-ins, three or four betterments. Three or four new tie-ins. Yeah. Right. Or so three or four betterments. Yeah. Yeah. It looks as though that if yeah. they, they, I would they say. decided to oh, do well, like a tie-in, it has to be based on the usage of the frontage that they're going to use. So. The proportion, you know, that the, they're going to pay proportionately. That was my biggest question I had was like, okay, if, if they ended up, but I mean, the reality of the matter is this. They're being charged with a sewer betterment because they are agricultural uh, use. You know, the, the statute gives the benefit to people who use their land for agricultural purposes uh, because there's always a cost there and why charge them the cost when they're running a farm. And the, the encouragement of the use of the land is to maintain it as a farm without causing them the cost to do it. In the event that they were to sell the farm and try to um, develop it, then all the costs for the betterment in, and interest come forward, pay the town so the town gets its interest if it were to be developed. So it, it's to basically to, to, to assist and help people who have farms who are using the land in a very um, uh, less use, less taxing, invasive manner. Motion? Go ahead. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the request for suspension of the sewer betterment according to Massachusetts General Law 61A, Section 18 for Parcel ID Map 43, Block 1, Lot 11, 43-1-11 and recorded with Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 22155, pages 346-347 and according to all information contained within the Statement of Entry into Suspension of Sewer Betterment dated April 27, 2010. Second. Further discussion from the Board? From the floor, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> Uh, number eight is now the walk-in period, but I think a uh, walk-in person is outside talking to Jamie. Yeah, I would. If. Hi, how are you? Good. Amelia Dockendorf, <laughs> 66 Manlet Road. Um, basically, I'm here to, number one, clear up the discussion of the petition for an override that um, I did take out papers for the week before last. I do feel that the override is still necessary, um, but I have some concerns from people I've talked to. I have basically a 50-50 yes-no relationship going with people I've spoken to which is, you know, a given. Nobody wants higher taxes, including myself. But um, I do feel that not only does the school specifically need it, but I think the whole town needs it. And um, one of my questions to you tonight is, is it possible to get a um, 
decrease to CPC funding, our taxes down to 1.5% versus 3% in preparation for an override if and when there is one later this year or next year. Let me answer that one as best I can. Uh, starting out, it wouldn't be something, I think uh, C CPC was voted by town meeting. And mm -hmm. anyone that can jump in and correct me, please do it. Uh, so it would have to go back to town meeting to decrease it right. to 1% or eliminate it or whatever it might be. Yeah. And it's to answer your question, yes, it is possible through a town meeting vote to alter mm -hmm. the CPC funding. Okay. So I guess I'm asking you, are you willing to put it on the warrant to get it on to town meeting? For this coming warrant? Yeah. No. I mean, I can't say for myself, but I just have heard about it. a special town meeting right. coming up? Your time. Trisha, I, a question. I know some things have to be on the annual town meeting, not a special town meeting. Mm -hmm. Is this one of those things? An override question? Well, this would this would this, this is would an override. Be just this would decrease be vote CPC for a reduction tax of CPC. Share. No, I don't believe so, but I can check. Um, I don't think there's any restrictions. Well, I'll, I'll answer the question oh, from my perspective. Yeah. I would not support doing that for two reasons. One, I wouldn't support decreasing the CPC period. But leaving that aside, um, procedurally, I think something as large scale as that would really serve the benefit of having long discourse and a lot of prepar preparation and discussion. Mm -hmm. And with this next town meeting coming in, special town meeting coming in two weeks, it doesn't leave enough time for that. Okay. And yeah, that's it, period. <laughs> you just just Amelia, Amelia right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I would sound and concur with, with Mr. Murray on that issue, only to the extent that you raise a salient issue, okay, um, about obviously schools. And that's an issue that we're dealing with. We've been the school committee, superintendent, town administrator, obviously our board have been trying to tussle with this year. Uh, it's not an issue that's going to go away. We're going to tussle with this coming fiscal year. And um, to take a look at the CPC, to reduce it, you could you could probably put that forward at the next town meeting, whether it's a special or an annual. Um, and some people might say you might be right, but it does an awful lot for the town. And yeah. what we get in return from that is for every dollar paid, we get money back from the state. Right. Now, if at some point that there is no match from the state, that may be an issue that the town should tackle. Mm -hmm. I think to, to try to reduce the CPC funding, to try to augment another budgetary issue and I'm not just saying the schools but even the town side because we town. go through a whole bunch mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's an issue as, as Rick says that needs to be vetted out and discussed at length then if it's brought to the town meeting then let the people at the town decide um, but I, I think we'd be wrong to bring it up in two weeks time for a special town meeting but if you want to raise that then I think you should um, yeah. I think right now I think we get a benefit right now like 35 percent if it were right. to go down to 10% or 5%, then you'd have to say, well, are we spending our tax dollars prudently in that respect? Then that's yeah, and I realize that, and I realize that it's all important. Um, you know, I just, I know that there's approximately $3 million in the unappropriated account for it, so or unappropriated mm -hmm. funds in the account. So, and as much as I love to look at situ parks and walk through the, you know, walkways and sidewalks and such, it's, it's kind of in my eyes, it's more important to have money for not only schools but other parts of the town. And and I know that this particular year, with the you know the amount being just for budget and just for you know paying the contract and stuff for the teachers, but the buildings themselves have to be looked at. I mean, they're just oh, yeah. they're awful. And you know, just to improve the schools themselves, we have to have more money coming into our school and and our town and our roadways and everything so I just feel that you know we've done our job for our parks we've done great jobs with our parks and I love them but kind of it's enough is enough and I just feel like we should kind of look at it in a different light <laughs> Tony <clears throat> just to reiterate I, I agree completely with John and Rick you know a special town meeting is really for things that have strict time constraints mm -hmm. and and you wouldn't take something as big of an issue as this and and you know rush it to to a decision right. um, just so everyone's clear the reduction in the CPC money would have absolutely no impact on the budget 
So right. all that would do is... No, I mean in preparation for an override. Oh, so it would yeah. kind of alleviate yeah. the blow. Right. I think what you're hoping at some point <clears throat> in time is that you would reduce CPC and then those people would, would then vote an override right. with that funds. Right. You know, that's... That's the gist I'm getting from a well, lot that's of people. up to debate whether that would even work. But, um, but regardless, the, um, the reduction of CPC would go back to the taxpayers and they would have no, no positive impact on, on any of the school budget or the town budget or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, No, I think it's basic. I'm saying it just basically as relieving the tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and you mentioned a few things about parks and stuff, but that CPC money, you know, a lot of the things, that, and they're kind of luxury items for the town over the last seven, how many years? Has been seven years or something with CPC? yeah. Um, you know, we've repaired all our historical things. We've researched right. certain things. We've, we've had parks. We've built fields. You know, mm -hmm. none of that stuff would have been able to happen at all. If no, it I know, and that's why I know so, it's important, yeah. and it does, it did great things, and it, it can, can keep doing great things. It's just that we do have $3 million in that unappropriated fund, and we could use it. It's just, and uh, do we need more in it if, while we're if, suffering? <laughs> and everything, what everyone says is absolutely correct. Uh, but the two things, although in your mind are connected, in a lot of people's mind are connected, mm -hmm. um, they are two distinct things. One would have to be done, the reduction, right. and then an override would have to be right. voted. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's certainly a strategy. Okay. All right. That's well, that, I guess that's, I just wanted to know for future reference. Um, I mean, my basic thing was tonight to see if we could get it on special town meeting. Yeah. But if we can do it next year, then, you know, because I think a lot of people are looking, you know, at the override this year and cringing, but maybe next year they're going to see that it's more needed. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. For okay. Just a very quick question. Um, just to add to Tony's list of things uh, that it does is let's not forget affordable housing either, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, very important to a lot of people in town. And I think we've been making good progress, particularly in the last couple of years, towards affordable housing. So that's, that's not a park or a trail. That's providing homes mm -hmm. for people that comes from CPC funds. So in one of your emails, you said that our tax rate is, you said something like the, the lowest. lowest. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you get us that information from what yeah, from what I that source right is? Here. Simple, or just can you send an email to us oh, so we sure. all have it? Or and yep. with the source on that because I'd be very interested. in that It was point. the DOR, just the yep. printouts from the from the DOR. Yeah, if you could just know. send us the website or whatever, okay. that would be helpful. I will. All right, thanks. John, just before she leaves, <clears throat> I guess I support what you're saying. It's it's and what she's saying, but 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 what Rick and John and Tony said, it's it's going to take time. Right. But I just didn't want you leaving here thinking that. Uh, you don't have any support to look at reducing that rate. Mm -hmm. You right. do. Okay. I do. For one. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, additional walk-ins? James? You guys, <coughs> how are you? Some point of clarification if yep. I could. Go right ahead. Thank you. I'd also like to actually thank Amelia publicly. She has worked diligently and tirelessly to try to bring awareness to challenges we all face in town, not just on the school side, but on the town side. Um, special town meetings coming up. Sounds like the state is changing the reduction from 6% to 4%. Not quite there yet, but if it does happen, uh, which would mean there'd be a change in the budget, does that need to be discussed at town meeting or how does that get allocated to make sure we can move forward to the proper budgeting purposes? I, just for point of clarification, I'm looking for some ruling on that. Well, let me just, for folks, here and listening at home, the budget has to go through a five-step process. It's in step two right now. Um, the governor proposes a budget, and then House Ways and Means comes out with a budget, then the Senate comes out with a budget, then it goes to conference to reconcile, then it goes to the governor and he can veto accept it. The governor submitted a budget that was level funded for local aid. We carried an original 10% reduction in our FY11 budget. House Ways and Means right before town meeting came out. Uh, with a recommendation that was uh, 4%. Right before our annual town meeting, we, the financial forecasting committee determined that we could lower the 10% local aid cut we were taking to 6%. Six. Mm -hmm. That was about, it was 5.8%. We actually lowered it because we got a health insurance increase for retirees and employees of 297000 
fortunately, because we've been carrying a 10 percent reduction in local aid up to that point, instead of additionally cutting budgets again, we were able to get that additional 10 percent to 6 percent proposed um, in the House uh, uh, budget um, by that amount. With the 6 percent reduction that we approved at town meeting two weeks ago, we have a $22,000 deficit right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that is because the assessments that we get from the cherry sheet went up, um, even though the local aid is projected to be at 4 percent. And as you know, that's not even revenue. It's being plugged by some right. direct grants to plug Chapter 70. So the Senate budget doesn't come out for another couple of weeks. So um, at this point, you know, we're beyond. It'll be beyond the 18th anyway. Okay, yeah, just trying to understand that. And we'll still, and right now, you know, barring any other other unforeseen circumstances, we'll have to address the $22,000 shortfall um, at some point in the future. And then the other question came. Jay, Jimmy, let me respond to that for one quick second before you yep. go on. Um, we discussed having another financial forecasting meeting prior to this meeting, and what we found is that there's really no new information. Right. You know, and the forecasting committee and the whole forecasting process is is not a risk-taking venture. You know, we're, we're really it's a conservative approach that's you know fiscally responsible, and it's really not um, doing putting any numbers out there that may come in or not come in. We're really working on base you know facts that we get. Um, I think part of your question is if by chance there are, and there are two, three, four things that could come in in our favor. That's exactly my question. And if, if it so happens, let me answer that. how do we do that? If it does happen, you know, what will happen is if we were to go say that now, then we would change the whole budget. And if it didn't happen, then we'd have to make cuts above, right, and, right, you know, right. above yeah, and beyond. Yeah. So if by chance it does happen, we will know that immediately. We'll have a forecasting meeting. Um, we'll say what the new number is going to be. And that would occur, you know, I think essentially you'd be able to kind of spend knowing that you get that money. But it wouldn't happen until the fall special meeting, and then there'd be any adjustments. Tricia, correct me if I'm wrong. At if there's point. any mm -hmm. finite, you know, sustainable numbers that we know are accurate, then they would be made at that point, and the budgets would all change. Um, one last. Well, I'll let you finish. I'll. All right, no, well, no. Go ahead. You can finish, and then I. Uh, well, the only thing I want to say to the public is that I, I've got to, you know, applaud the effort of the school committee, particularly Bill and Jamie and Sue, because they have been working extremely hard to try and find ways to find money that unfortunately is not there to make their deficit smaller. Um, they've met with Tricia many of times. I've spoken with them many of times. We're all on, on the same team trying to find this money, um, but unfortunately it's not there. And I don't think that the town is in the position to take a leap of faith that something may come in. And there's a piece of paper that Jamie's looking at, that I'm looking at, that Trish has a copy of, that we all have a copy of, that are six or seven things that would be, an Im that may impact the budget for both the school and the town, that we hope all of them happen. They're hopeful. But, right, but there's just nothing there that's saying, you know, this 100,000 is coming in, this right. 50,000 is coming in. And we realize that every 10,000 is, is important to both sides of the, um, the ledger. Um, but. There is an intense effort from everyone on the school side of things to, to roll every rock over and to find every um, nook and cranny where there may be some money. Unfortunately, there's just nothing there right now. And if it does become available, we're going to happily dispense it to both sides of the. Right. And, and again, the, the purpose wasn't to bring up to say, let's take the leap of faith to do the 4%. Mm -hmm. The purpose is, if that does indeed commit it for, what's our mechanism so we can make mm -hmm. sure that we react correctly to right. what we need right. to do? And then lastly, the only other question revolved around the free cash account, and if someone were to bring it up, did they need a warrant at the special town meeting for that, or was there able to come up and have a discussion about moving any of that towards, towards the budget? At the last town meeting, to be frank, I was standing at the microphone when they moved the vote and didn't call on me. I was going to ask, instead of trying to do an override or move a million and a half out of the other fund, which uh, wouldn't have been prudent, whether we can move any of the free cash, but that was kind of blown by before I could speak. I don't know whether we need to try to get on a warrant to discuss that or whether that can be brought up in over discussion in the town meeting. Well, my personal... Go you, ahead. Go, unless you... Yeah, just... Uh, there is no mechanism right now mm -hmm. to get on the special town meeting to reopen the budget. But I think, is your question... Is your question, do you have... Let's just say 
Let's say someone wanted to call. Let's say someone wanted to call. I mean, does it have to go to town meeting, or would that person come before us or come before what? I mean, you're just I'm asking. A, you're just asking a procedural right. question. Correct. Right. Right. Does there, it even? Does it have to go people, to town meeting? There have been people that have inquired about it, and I just so that would so it would have to go to town meeting. So it would have to be on the warrant. It's not on the warrant. And just to discuss free cash for one second, there's about three hundred thousand dollars there, mm -hmm. which is less than one half of one percent of our total budget. So that's like the mechanism if your projections for local aid doesn't come in where you think it is. If you don't sell as many, um, whatever, uh, inspection, mm -hmm. you know, building, building permits, exactly. Um, if one, ex if snow and ice goes above um, what we think it could be, it's really not a lot of excess money sitting there. In fact, it's probably not enough if you looked at probably what other towns had sitting in their reserve to deal with issues. Um, so I don't think if we went to a consultant and said, would you take this money and put it into your budget, I don't think any of them would say, yes, that's the prudent thing to do either, um, is, my, is my opinion. It's really not a lot of money sitting there to deal with anything that might happen to come up um, over the next, what, what are we in May, you know, three months. Three months. I think, I, I think that it's unfortunately, and it's been this way for years, it's really misnamed. I think free cash gives the impression that there's this free money out there that doesn't, isn't earmarked for anything that's just floating out there in limbo someplace that we could all just take. Not quite, as Tony said, not quite as easy as that. Um, you know, it is used for those, for that. Stop gap. You know, short, shortfall in the budgets, or your budgets or our budgets. Or, I mean, that's what it's been used for historically, uh, not to balance the budget. So it's not really free cash, in my opinion. Anyway. If I could just ask Tony a question, how does that free cash figure compare to what it's been in the past? Like, is that? Well, if you want to compare it to last year, it's a lot more. Well, last year was. If you compare it to three years ago, it's Which a is lot probably less. more typical. Yeah. I mean, it okay. used to be above a million dollars, you know. Um, or hovering in that range. Last year, it was was it negative? It was it was negative. It was negative, was negative 192,000, and so the million got spent down because not only was it decreasing on the goal forward, but we were subsidizing the operating budget with it. But I think okay, and so now it's now just it's at 150, 300, 300. Okay. Again, that come July 1st, we get recertified, and depending on how our year closes out, if we need our revenue estimates, and if we turn any expenditures into change, we go down. Even more. Right. But Jamie has a good point. If it, let's say, for right. instance, it went up. If you didn't spend, if your expenditures were less than what you had budgeted, then in the fall we could address it there as well. We could say, look, free cash went from 300 to right. 600, right. and do yeah. we want to disperse some of that? And obviously, our concern is, you know, I, I look at 300 and I see, you know, nine, ten people that aren't going to lose their job. So, you know, that's kind of how we're trying to look yep. at whether or not, and yep. if there was a part it would come out or not. So, you know. Uh, being a business person, sometimes you do take a little gamble. And but I, I think we also have to. In, in I'm not here, by the two, Joe. I'm yeah. not here to explain, <laughs> guys. I'm just here to raise a question as to I'll drop my what's the point of procedure I, on it. That's, yep, that's what yep, I'm trying yep, to yep, figure yep, out. Yep. So rather, people, I can go back and let people know this is either what you do. <coughs> rather than discussion, I, yeah. I appreciate no, I that. You. I don't okay. want to give them the wrong I just advice. Just want to say two things because I, I think what's trying to happen is they want to see if there's revenue right now that would preserve a few jobs. Yep. So clearly the grant that is plugging the Chapter 70, I think you can go to the bank with that. It's about 80, 95, think, right? Yeah. The net is around 80. So I think that's a good number. The other one that it would be bankable is if negotiations with the unions on the health insurance increases are successful, if those result um, in our ability to have the surplus, which we've already allocated, right. that's available now, too, because mm -hmm. Mary would allow that in anticipation of knowing that we could reduce the health insurance budget at the special. And we so, are having conversations right, about and, that. Right, and we are as well. So mm -hmm. those are the two that, you know, instead of saying, you know, well, nice try, good luck till the fall. Yeah. Those are two that there's an opportunity if there's something, you know, sooner, especially the 80, I think you're good to go on, um, is, is the other one, which is $200,000 on yeah. the, the health piece. All right. Is that 200000 the school side? or the School side. Go. It's 297 total. It's 100 well, you know, at this At this point, again, that, that, that is a prospect list that we're trying yep. to figure out Understood. what's there. And we're, yep. we're just, to Tony's point, clawing and trying to find the best way to do it, understanding 
the situation with taxes and everything else. We're coming to you guys just to go point of clarification and get some advice. So and we'll, we'll appreciate the advice. We thank you very much for coming thank in. You. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, next item is the emergency sewer tie in eight Claymore Terrace. Evening, Frank Wayne from the Board of Health. How are you? We have pictures of Hi, Frank, how are you? <laughs> eight Claymore Terrace is appropriately named um, <laughs> for the soil. Uh, there was no perk on this uh, on this property. It failed pretty pretty readily. The groundwater is at a foot and a half. Um, so the, the septic system that is there is in, basically in the groundwater. Not not an unusual um, occurrence for this neighborhood. Unfortunately, the homeowners have been dealing with this uh, for years, as you can see from the photographs and from the letter that they sent in. We've got a ponding in the backyard when when there's been. Um, some rain and and uh, and use of the system. They um, don't use a whole lot of water compared to a lot of families, and and have been trying to conserve things. Uh, and and they tape up, as you can see. Also, we have a picture of tape of a taped up pipe that that prevents the sewage from backing into the house um, when the water level does get high. So the system's failed. Uh, there is no alternative uh, for them really other than a tight tank here and and so it meets the the qualifications that the board and selectmen and and the board of health have worked out over the years um with respect to that and with and and the uh um, homeowner has also uh, presented us with um, proposals and letters from their uh, neighbors um as to uh, depending on which way they go and which way they work it out with dpw um, the necessary easements uh, are ready to go forward um, there's two different approaches. That's really not our bailiwick to figure out exactly how they make the connection to the sewer, but but um, they've got a couple of ideas. Uh, Sean. I, was, uh, I didn't attend the Board of Health meeting where this particular address was discussed, so I had, had some questions this afternoon, so I asked a friend of mine, Ricky Turner, to come by my office, and he had done just that. Spent half an hour or more, maybe an hour at my office, explaining what, what we have here. And I thought, if I'm not mistaken, do we have two homes on that road that, are tie, that have a spaghetti line? Jennifer's nodding her. That's right. All right. Um, two other homes, you mean? Yep. That's correct. Okay. Right. Um, I had questions. The, really, the only question I had was probably for Phil, and it was if you did two test holes, you did one perk. And why wouldn't you do the second perk? We did it in the, the best soil we could find. That's where you did the perk? Yes. All right. Okay. And why, why didn't you do it in the second hole? It was worse. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so, you know, after a long discussion with him, I'm convinced that their only alternative, like their recommendation, is for a tight tank. My question, my question might be, and that's probably not our business, they're going to tie into an existing line, or do we run a third line, or do we run a second line? Are those two homes now in one line? And right, that's right, right now, the, those two homes are in a single line that goes into And there, there are three lines that go in front of the sidewalk on um, Eden Dam. Two of them are from Kitten Court, and one is from the two, two on, on Claymore. And what we're trying to do is tie into that one that's on Claymore. All right. Uh, one, just a couple of comments. Once again, I mean, the reason that it's coming before us tonight is because the homes for sale. It's Title Five. It's the yeah, it, but, it, yeah, it's it's exactly. But, yeah. So, but that's the reason it's home for sale. They, they, uh, they, they really should have done it years ago. Yeah, probably should have, and it probably would have been easier to, to vote on, you know, years ago if it was uh, on my part. Um, I'm looking at the pictures, and I can't. You can't tell by the pictures. But let me ask somebody. Is there absolutely no ch no way you could put a uh, septic system in there? You could you, not you, with you could not the build a, mo a mound. <coughs> no. Okay. That's my two questions. My my question I think goes more towards DPW in that the sewer line. I know it's on Beaver Dam to an extent. It stops where Al, if you don't mind me asking, Hazel. 
And the reason why I'm asking is because, you know, we're putting spaghetti lines all over the place. The next question I have is, okay, what if the town were to put up a line going up, up to Claymore, going straight into the terrace? Um, because you got two, and now you're going to have three. You might soon enough you're going to probably have four or five. I mean, what what's the cost? And to push it onto a betterment for everybody to say, do a whole entire sewer line straight in, give everybody the betterment to have to pay for it over the course of the 20 years, and that way at least, you know, I mean, with all due respect, if this property is deemed, you know, non-compliant with Title V and they have to use town sewer. Presumably, the next lot, next the, the lot abutting it on both sides are going to have the same effect. We know two lots, two lots over have the same problem. So I mean, for all intents and purposes, most of them are going to have it. You know, given the w wouldn't you have to go to DEP? Wouldn't that be like Road to the Lane? Wouldn't you have to get an extension? Yes. Yeah. Once you extend the sewer lines, say up a little further up Beaver Dam, uh, now then the, there's the uh, opportunity for everyone along there to connect to it, which is a good thing. But it's, it's, it's fundamentally it will be an expansion of the sewer line, and we have the town has previously decided to go on a priority basis based upon the DEP permitting process that results in us going first to Musquashka and then ultimately we come back and do more extensive sewering in the harbor, but that's a later phase. If I could comment further on, on that, we've been going through this process now for a number of years, and, and the primary concern, um, particularly when the moratorium was still on, was, you know, everybody would be rushing in and, and, and we were Time concerned down. about a deluge of emergency sewer applications. and, and over the years, as, as I've been on the Board of Health working with the Board of Selectmen, we've established some standards that are in addition to um, what we normally experience with respect to Title V. And when I first started doing this, we were probably getting, well, we were probably getting five or six applications a year, and I think we were approving about four of them. Um, and, and actually, we didn't have any uh, last year at all. And I think we had three the previous year, and, and you know, we're, here we are in April, and we just had one. Part of that has to do with the real estate market, I'm sure. Uh, I think part of it also has to do with the, with the citizens in the town behaving just like the, this family has done, where, where they struggle by um, uh, to, to deal with the situation. A lot of people go and, and do the laundry at the laundromat in, in situ rather than using it at their own home. Um, but then, unfortunately, and, and Mr. Norton and I have discussed this extensively over the years, we didn't design Title V. But the way Title V is, 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 is functioned, it, the recognition that people um, shouldn't be forced to incur the expense of these new systems, new Title V systems, um, until an emergency or usually until they have to sell their home. So when you're selling your home, you do a Title V. And, and if you fail, then you know you have to spend the money on a new system. And, and so that's really what drives it uh, in, in a case like this, is that people really should have done it a long time ago, but once they are forced to have to sell their home, in this case the, the homeowner is being transferred, um, now he's got to go ahead and do it. Um, and the only alternative, the other point too, not all, some of the board members are new to this, is that the only alternative really for these families, uh, because we we go through, can you put in an innovative Title V system in, in, in these properties? And in some places in, Tich, in Situa can qualify for that. This property doesn't because of the nature of the soil and the, and the size of the lot. Um, the only alternative they have is a tight tank. Well, where does the sewage end up going if it goes in a tight tank? It goes into, this, mm -hmm. into our sewage system. So uh, we haven't solved any problem. Can I ask a question? I don't understand why we aren't requiring a tight tank. That's commonly done most places when there's no park. Uh, tight, tight tank is, uh, uh, I, th I think the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health over the years have, have seen that as a very un, uh, uh, very uneconomical alternative to, to homeowner impose on homeowners. Yeah. Versus perpetuation of a bad policy of spaghetti lines, which we're trying to, you know, 
Mm -hmm. get rid of. I, I think the goal is ultimately to sewer all the people who need it in the town. It's just going to take an awful long time for us to do that. But we have we are a situation. I keep bringing it up periodically. <laughs> that we are getting awfully, awful close to our limit. I mean, last month, and I don't have the figures in front of me, but I think we reached 1.5 million gallons uh, went through the treatment plant over a 12-month rolling average. That is above our limit, all right? That's above our limit. We haven't touched Mesquashka Pond area yet, and we are already above what we're allowed to do in the sewer treatment plant are extremely close to it. Uh, don't hold me to the numbers. Uh, not that this one house is going right. to shake up the world by any means, but I think we have to be conscious, and we've been you know, talking about that for a year or two now. Um, we're gonna, something has to be done. Now we're just going to get to the point where there'll be no sewage, and I've said this for years. Every home we do it, again, this is not going to do it, prohibits a home from down near Mesquashka Pond maybe from getting done. So we got to keep that in mind. Somewhere along the line, we're going to be faced with a situation, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but we're, we're not going to be able to tie anybody in until we fix, make adjustments as to a treatment plant. I just bring that up. The only other question, I have a few more, Frank, sorry. Uh, and you're on, hot, you're on the hot seat. Um, I'm used to it. I know that we... Uh, <laughs> Recently, we had another request, I thought, for a tie-in off the tree streets. Um, I'm not sure if it was Linden or whether it was Poplar Street. They have a mounded system, and they're looking to get tied in. We ended up saying no. They're in the same situation as, as these individuals. They're selling their property, I think, is what it, my understanding. Not, okay, so they're not. Um, so I kind of look at that, and I'm trying to balance this issue. I recognize that two people across the street, I had mismarked it, I thought it was further down, but it's across the street, I had the tie-in. And I'm not saying, I'm kind of on the fence here, because I'm not really sure. If we were to grant this for the Locust property, my position would be then, how could we say no to the other remaining three properties if they were to seek it? Which puts me into another situation, which is if we go one street over to Tickner Court, I recognize there are some properties there. And let's face it, Glacier Till, I mean, whatever the deposits are for the, the, the um, composition of the subsurface soils, they're not going to be markedly different in this area for the most part, unless you hit a vein where you get all the sand you need to be able to put the, se the septic system. My point is, is that if we allow this, obviously we've allowed two. We're going down that road, and I think, and, I, and I'm not sure whether it's the right road. Maybe it is the right road. But if that happens here, then we're going to have spaghetti lines this area. And if the neighbor one street over says it, I think out of equity and fairness, we'd have to say yes if they're going to do the same, which puts us in direct violation, or not violation, but conflict with our priority of the sewering of the districting for other areas. And I think that's where I'm kind of looking at. That's why I was asking the question of saying, okay, if we're going to do that, then maybe we should do a whole betterment to say it for that one area. But I think we're opening up that issue of saying, okay, and, and I know the tight tanks. I do know. I do know tight tanks. I'm saying I know it's a very costly proposition. Are we doing it? I mean, is that their only alternative? Which it is, and it's a costly alternative. Do we sacrifice our priorities for the sake of a cost-benefit analysis for one individual? And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure if that's you know, the right thing I, to do. It's, it's, we've been wrestling with this for a long time, but just just so you know, I mean, the Board of Health regularly um, reviews plans that people come in, and and you'd be amazed at some of the systems. I mean, Sean sees it; he sits through a lot of these meetings. Some of the systems that we literally shoehorn in, uh, in some <coughs> of these properties, and um, the the DEP regulations with respect to some of these alternative uh, and innovative systems have gotten fast more, system more or something exactly. Else, yeah. So so you can fit in systems in in some of the properties in situ with that you know. Right. You, you, you probably would say, I, oh, geez, this looks just like this property. So you've got to do this, and we've been doing this on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, some properties, we, we like that, the one you just mentioned, we say, no, you, you, can, you can put a Title V system in here, and so you have to. Um, this property, just it, it's not, you can't. It just wouldn't work. I think we have to, if I just was, you know, for years we were told, not by anyone, but, you know, the tight tanks, no one used tight tanks anymore. Now I'm hearing that may not be the case. The tight tanks may be used in other communities. Uh, 
I'm going to jump in here, though, Joe. Yeah. We gave the Board of Health the instruction. All right. I know we did, yeah. only because right. we were right. told. Okay. All right. That's why All we right. gave the Board of Health the instruction. Right. We were told. But now I'm hearing that maybe tight tanks are used in other places a little more freely than, but, than you know, we were a told. Tank, a tight tank doesn't solve the problem. Whether you have a spaghetti line or a tank, tight tank, it's going to the same place. Yeah, I understand that. So, yeah. So, and the, and, and the know, homeowner pays for all the spaghetti lines and all the hookups. Right. That's, that's right. right. So it, it's a benefit to the homeowner where it really makes no difference to the town. On this individual case, but you know, looking beyond that, looking as John said to the neighborhood, and to the area, and other people, it's it's not completely separate in my mind. Um, but I understand what you're saying. Sean was ahead of me. Go ahead, Sean. Sean. Well, well, that's why it's so important that we do this I and I. How many gallons a day? How many gallons a month, Al? Not to put you on the spot of fresh and salt water we treat at our treatment plant. Thousands. <coughs> Al. A lot. Uh, <laughs> Al. How many gallons per uh, per month, approximately? In, I'm not going to hold you to it, but mm -hmm. we treat. A, my point is, we treat a lot of fresh and salt water. That that's it's so important that this I and I project is on. Yeah, we treat um, about 65 percent of the water we treat at the sewer plant is groundwater. <laughs> that's, that's why we're doing the um, the project for I and I. And Jennifer, 110 gallons per day, correct? Per bedroom. Per bedroom. Right. Right. But that, but irregardless whether it's whether it's sewage, whether it's groundwater, irregardless, that's what they count. You know what I mean? Well, that, I, that, I agree. That's what but, they but, count. Uh, right. it, it'd be nice if they could just somehow just count the sewage, but uh, that's a concern of mine. I'll tell you that. Go ahead. I I agree with everything y'all are saying about the long-term issues and the pun intended, holding your nose while we deal with this particular issue as it impacts the uh, larger picture. Looking purely at this one, as Frank said, you know, to me, I'm going to vote in favor of it because it's going to end up in the sewage treatment plant anyways. And so that, so just dealing completely with this specific one. The long-term issue is efficiencies and improvements in the uh, wastewater treatment plant facility as well as I&I, &I, but <coughs> don't forget, I&I &I goes two ways. The more fresh water you bring in, the lower your nitrogen is, which kind of works to our advantage. But we still have to, and there's different ways, and Al and I have talked about this with other, perhaps, technologies of improving the nitrogen treatment aspects of our plant and so on and so forth. It doesn't change the pounds of nitrogen. It changes the percentage. Correct, the concentration. So it's, it's, it's not just as simple as doing one thing. But we have to address the larger issue, because I completely agree with you on the larger <coughs> issue. And unfortunately, I'm just... I'm just going case by case on this, and I understand there's a snowball effect or a domino effect with other houses, and I understand the, the bigger issue, but I see it as it's going to go to the treatment plant anyways. Their letter was 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 amazing to me about the conditions of the house already. I understand it's for sale, um, but, you know, I just don't, I, I, I think this is a, a, a reputable request. Further discussion from the board? I'd like to ask uh, Tricia to, in the, down the road, in the future, some time in the next, uh, when things slow down, if they ever do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to get us a, uh, a report on tight tanks and, and where they may be used and, and, and where they may not be used. I, that concerns me a little bit that yeah. uh, we may be one of the only towns around not doing it. and. and uh, and actually, if I could, before, if one more question. I just want to confirm. You said it, but I just want to make sure, sure. That, you, that I heard you right. There's no other option for any um, any other uh, septic system. system. Only a tight tank okay. for this one. Yeah. All right. Just Thank one. You. I'm sorry. Can I? I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Chair, just yep. quickly. Um, how many bedrooms, Frank? Is it three? Three bedroom, okay. So if they ended up, uh, and uh, these people are moving out, the thing that disturbs me is the fact that they're moving. I realize that happens because they go through Title V, they find it's a failure, and now they got to upgrade, they can't, and they can't sell their home. If they decided to, the new people who buy it decide to upgrade to a four bedroom home, Ooh. can they? Sure. sure, right? If they want to go five, they can, right? This is, and this is the reason why I get worried yeah. about it, it's because once we open that floodgate, with all due respect, Obviously, we want people to improve, but 
when they get a benefit from us, sure. which they wouldn't have ordinarily gotten. Under Title V, they couldn't because they'd have to make sure that they have three bedroom plus one, which is that reserve area. And, and that's the thing that kind of concerns me going forward. We haven't on addressed this. that really. I don't, I don't think that for. But, but we do, you know, for, for the innovative systems, we impose a deed restriction on the number of bedrooms. And that, that could do, we could do that here. Could we well. could do the same? Uh, rather than prolong this, we have a 730 uh, hearing, hearing uh, public hearing that we have to uh, deal with at 730. It's now 25 minutes of eight. Now we can, if the board wants, we can hold these people here and, and uh, Discuss it afterwards. Or entertain a motion now. Make um, a motion. Motion. Before we make a motion, can I ask? Oh, well, perhaps one point you might want to consider is that, um, provided that the home can be serviced by the existing spaghetti line, as opposed to running a new spaghetti line, which involves extensive street work, construction, tearing up the street, and all that stuff. Inside. That would be more favorable to the community that the solution be reached whereby the existing spaghetti line be used as opposed to a new one be run across Beaver Dam. Yeah. I like the potholes so well. More potholes, that's better. Uh, Rick, you want a motion? Um, uh, I was, uh, was going to ask for, for comment on that comment. Well, it's but it's not... <laughs> I just wanted to know, is that, is that, is that likely? Right, well, we can, we can come back to it. The, the public hearing won't take that long. Yeah. If you want to come back to it, we'll postpone this until after the public hearing. Uh, next item. Uh, 12. Item 12? 12 is the, we're going to move hearing. up to the public hearing. I'm going to recuse myself. In Situate Harbor. How are you tonight? Good evening. How are you? Good, thanks. We have, uh, just bear with us. We have to move a little bit in the agenda here. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Agenda item number 12. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you want to do, and we'll go from there. Okay, sure. My name is uh, David Ferguson, and I'm uh, an inn owner of the Inn at Situate Harbor. Uh, this is Lisa Coyne, who is uh, uh, going to be our pub manager uh, when, when that opens. And we're here to accomplish uh, three things. Um, <clears throat> one involving Lisa is to uh, change our uh, manager name on our liquor license to Lisa uh, from Linda Ferguson. The second is we have, want to uh, alter the, liquor, the scope of the liquor license in the, the area that it covers. And the third thing is a part of the financing, uh, we have to pledge that license to uh, South Coastal Bank. And so those are the three things that we wish to accomplish tonight. We've taken one, 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 two, and three. Uh, the first one would be the, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just go two and three? The third one might, sure. could be a little more discussion. So why don't we- Want me to make a motion on number two? Why don't you please? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant <coughs> the request of the Inn at Situate Harbor, Inc., also known as Cold Brook Partners, LLC, to pledge their common vehiculars all kinds of alcoholic beverage license to South Coastal Bank, 54 Front Street, Situate, Massachusetts. Second. Discussion from the Board on this? Relatively common. From the floor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Number three. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the request of the Inn at Situate Harbor a change of manager from Linda Ferguson to Lisa Coyne. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Further discussion? Just a quick question of, of your background. Have you managed pubs before, restaurants? Yeah. No, nope. this is all new to you? Okay. Um, the one thing that I just want to bring up that we've talked about a lot of the last six months is just um, the drinking laws and, and, and serving minors and stuff in the town and how we're really trying to get enforce that to the um, highest degree. So um, a TIP certified, I don't know if you are TIP certified, um, and um, you know, just know that, that we're really, uh, we're looking at those bylaws that we have now and hoping to strengthen them even more and that it's just not tolerable to serve minors in, in the town of Situate. John? Nope, Tony said it best. That was great. So you have the authority to hire people? 
as well? Or does that go to the owners? In, in your... conjunction with the owners. Okay. So everybody who's going to be working there is going to be TIP certified or Correct. what have you? Okay. Yep. Um, a motion to be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. And now we'll move back to one. This is the, the extension of the, the license. Uh, why don't you explain? Sure. Uh, in the initial application, um, I did not include, uh, in describing the building and the, the area that the liquor license coverage, I, I misunderstood the application. I didn't include uh, certain exterior parts of our, uh, of our building. Mm -hmm. And most notably, it's the northeast section that faces the harbor. There is a, um, a patio outside in front. And up, the, uh, up on the, the hill a little bit, there is a uh, deck that comes off of our front, off from uh, our lobby. So we're looking to extend um, the liquor license to cover those two areas. Could I ask one question first? You, you, the, the, the liquor license for the lounge now yes. is till what time? Uh, 12, 12 a.m., 12 to 12. Would you intend to have the same hours for, for the patio? I would presume so, yes. So that's what you're asking they would be, for. They would be the same hours. I didn't know that there would be a differentiation of that. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm just thinking of... Uh, the neighbors came in the last time. The, you know, 12 o'clock, no, let's talk, if we could talk about that. I just think 12 o'clock, because by the time people leave the patio and finish that last drink, it's 12, 20, 12, 30. They go probably to the parking lot where they park the cars. Yeah, in looking at that, what we've we've kind of, uh, our, our general game plan is to look at the, the pub itself is really a, an amenity uh, for the inn. And we, our priority mm -hmm. in all of that is that we have guests uh, that sleep at the inn. And so the noise level and certainly the, uh, the uh, amount of people I think that are going to gather there is not going to be a great number of people. Uh, we have a great concern for our neighbors as well because of, the, because of the noise. So we're very conscious of that. I know, but still, when, you know, when, when you're open and it's a summer's night, you're not going to turn people away either, you know, uh, from a business standpoint. That's my only concern. I don't know if the board shares that <coughs> concern or not. Maybe we can work out something with the hours here tonight. Sounds like, Dave, would you consider closing the patio earlier? Um, if, that, if that needs to be done, yes. I mean, as a matter of course, I think it's uh, we're willing to work <clears throat> within the guidelines that uh, with you, with everybody here to make that you know favorable for everyone. Sure. I just was going to say, and I've heard nothing but great things yeah. about your whole building. So I don't want you know you don't want that to change. So I mean, even you know if we rolled that back a little bit and you found that geez, it's really hurting your business, and maybe you know come back to us later. But you know. That's, uh, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I, I, I understand that. Rick? Uh, this will affect my answer or my feelings as the time. But what's going to exactly be going on outside? Are you going to have a, a mobile bar outside, or is it just going to be people come from the inside bar, which is down below there, right? Right, People that's coming from the inside bar, and they're just sitting outside? Uh, or are you going to have a, a, you know, one of those mobile bars plugged in with a cooler and couple of stereo systems and things of that nature. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> now I know there won't be sound because that's not part of the license of the other part, right? Right. So, but I mean, in terms of the, are you going to be serving out there? Um, that's a good question. We haven't really answered that directly. Uh, I don't want to eliminate that as, as uh, an option for us because it is, if you've been there, the area is uh, kind of secluded from, it's got a hedge that goes, wraps around, and it's sunken. Uh, well, you're talking like when you're walking on Front Street and you're headed north, and you're and you're bending. You're bending around you're the corner. You're going to bend the corner. You, you right go down there, and that's the patio that's you're talking the patio about. Area. That's correct. Yeah. Right. Um, the initial the initial uh, uh, thought for us is to have basically a series of porch furniture out there where, where our guests can can relax with a drink, so they can carry it from the pub uh, out to that area and right. and drink it out there. Now, if that's Same what you're porch. if that's what you're proposing, I actually would support the the midnight. Just personally, my view would be to support the midnight one. If you're going to be serving out there. I would want it earlier than midnight. I understand significantly. But keep it, keep in mind that once we give this license, it's, it's well. As, my next qu my next question was going to be to y'all who are more experienced than I am in this. This has to get re-upped each year. Yeah, but it's very difficult to un undo, undo it. it. I just think the decision we make here tonight is likely going to be You may the be one. the one you're going to live okay. with. Uh, Cause I, and I you know I understand yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the concept of some lawn furniture out there and a couple of people going out with cocktails is a great one. But, and I, with all due respect, I, I can see it happening differently. 
That's all I'm saying. I, I and I think, yeah. and this is more, as much for your sake as it is for ours and the neighbors, <clears throat> because the one problem, the biggest problem we had in the establishment, I guess out of the, the past owners or maybe the ones before, mm. was the late noise in the parking lot from the patio. And from the back, you know, that was the... That people over spilling, you know, they they drink... Without the end of the night, they just, they wouldn't leave. It's yeah. 12 o'clock and the bar's closed and they can't go anywhere else, so they, they uh, okay. sit in no. the parking lot. That's my only, that's my concern. And you don't want to have to come back here with noise complaints or drinking after hours in the parking lot complaints and stuff like yep. that, you know. That's, that's a, so that's, that's, a, that's pretty good. valid. It's a pretty valid yeah. uh, point. And one of the things that uh, I want to make sure that you guys and everybody here understands is that uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I very much appreciate and very sensitive to the, the mm. whole issue of um, you know alcohol awareness, tips training, and all of that, and, and especially uh, noise created by people that you know uh, can get boisterous in the late hours. Uh, one of the things that we do is we have all of our staff is going to be tip certified and trained, as well as our hotel staff. Uh, they may not all be TIP certified, but they're all trained in how to deal with noise and how to deal with uh, that type of a customer should it happen. I can't guarantee that will never happen because that can happen at, at any given time during the course of a day. We don't want to promote that, and that's not what our intention is uh, because ultimately, uh, it's a, as uh, has been said, it's a great place and, and everything is, is, is doing so well there. The last thing we need is to have that type of environment created, and that's not the environment we're going to create. We do want to have the option from a standpoint of a business model that allows us to have some flexibility be, to, to move a bar out there should, uh, should it be required. You know, it might happen. It's a beautiful place. I can't, uh, you know, as part of our discussions in developing the, the, the business model for this is the ability to have, you know, a small meeting. You know, we, we have a very limited space there, so it's not, it's not a big number of, uh, of people. But to have the ability that should somebody want you know, some kind of a setup like that, we'd like to be able to offer it because I think it would be good for the end, it'd be good for the town, and it'd offer an, offer an alternative to, you know, a reception style thing at the park or, or to other places. Uh, I, I think it, that's not the main intent, though. And, and don't misunder, misunderstand, you know, it's, I'm off for the concept, it had to be for, it's worked well, it's a great idea. My concern is the, the potential for problems, and, and if we can avoid those, yeah. that potential tonight, deal with it tonight that's all yeah I think you make a good point that they it is easier for them to come in and ask for it to be extended if we have no complaints you know mm -hmm. for example as opposed to us having to come down and if there are complaints move it back so I, I find that a compelling point I just sure. want to say I am a little worried about the bar <laughs> outside idea but uh, um, I understand where you're coming from Tony Dave one other quick question sure. the hedges do if you're on that patio, do you have access to Front Street, a direct? There is a there is a passageway that's been sort of been put there, and it has a trellis that's over it. So yes. Yeah. So there's, there's are, what do you what do you plan to do about that? I mean, the last thing we want is someone out there walking down Front Street with a alcoholic beverage. Good question. I don't have an answer for you. I don't. I, I presume the, the if the the license, much like it is now, it would have to be somewhat patrolled by us. Uh, we can't. Uh, we have not discussed closing that off. Um, very akin now that if someone were to get a drink and they, they can actually open the door and walk out into the area and have a drink now, uh, we, have to re we have to tell people that they can't do that. Um, I suppose signage would be an answer. Or some sort of door or something. I mean, I can just uh, I see someone looking, at, yeah, that's looking at the, uh, the harbor and walking across the street. And a little gate with a little bit of a, a nice sign that says, you know, says something to the effect that you, know, you can't go beyond this point. Uh, is, is certainly possible. That, that would be great. So, what what is the thought of the board in terms of the time? Would it be ten thirty, eleven? I'm just trying to think. Do we, would you want to get any comments from any neighbors before we set a time, or anyone have any thoughts on a time, suggestions? If not, ma'am. Hi, Marjorie Leary, one ninety nine. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think you know that that corner with the pier is a little noisy at one o'clock, twelve o'clock. I, I think it would be best to roll it back to 10 and see what happens. I, I don't care what they do as long as it's not noisy. That, that's the issue as far as I'm concerned. This, um, yes. Deborah Jackson, 15 Beaver Dam Road. I concur about it. Um, I think a time limit of a little bit earlier um, would really help in that situation. We live right beside the parking lot. And right. many a night, 
during the summer, we hear them outside in the parking lot just talking, and the sound carries right up the hill. So, you mean now? now you mean I mean, you know, just the general conversation. After a wedding, yeah. coming in yeah. from a wedding or something, and they're just hanging out talking in the parking lot, and mm -hmm. they don't realize how loud they are. Mm -hmm. So you're not you're not talking about consumption going on in the parking lot. You're just talking about conversation, conversation. afterwards. So I think that sure. if the drinking stops at ten thirty, that might stop the twelve o'clock conversations out there. Understood. Okay. Thanks. Does TKs have a different time on their outdoor? No, no. I, I don't think so. And what's Fins theirs? Does. What's the time of TKs? Fins is eleven. And what about TKs? Well, TKs. Is, I think uh, they're all the same. I. Think. Till one? one, so you can be outside of TKs till one. This is Norton Henry Lynch, 15 yeah. Beaver Dam Road. Uh, I, I was reflecting on the idea of them walking from the patio onto Front Street, and it, I come to in situate harbor days, Reba sells alcohol in their right. little strip next to their restaurant, and they're firm. They stop anybody from coming out onto that sidewalk on Front Street. I mean, right. Is extremely firm about how they self-govern that area because they don't want to end up in trouble. And uh, I said, I, I, I also want to say to the board through you, Mr. Chair, that uh, they've done a wonderful job at the end, as far as we're concerned. They seem to put, I don't know how they do it really, they come up making a dime, but. Jesus, David. Down there off the stand on the door if uh, things weren't going on. And I also wouldn't be a first one if there was trouble in the lot. I'd call 911. And they could resolve it. But uh, I've always talked to Mr. Ferguson, and uh, they seem to bend over backwards for anything. Yeah. Are you suggesting any time then? Or just no, sir, I can't. That's up to the is 10 o'clock fine with you? It's <laughs> an <laughs> interesting that situation here. <laughs> um, further comments from the floor? From the board? Make a motion? I'll make a motion. Can you find the, uh, if, piece with, of do you want to talk about a time before you make a motion? Sure. Or so Put it in the motion. What sort of time were you thinking about? I was thinking 10 o'clock. Do you want... Can you, can you live with that to start with? If we have the option to say, you know, and if it, it works out well and there's no troubles, no. then yeah, I'm fine. That's perfect. Good. We'll, we'll work well. I'll make it happen. Good. That's all I need to hear. Okay. So this is number one. Move of the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the Inn at Situate Harbor and DBA Inn at Situate Harbor, 7 Beaver Dam Road, permission to alter the premises located at 7 Beaver Dam Road, Situate Mass, to include the exterior part of the property known as the porch and patio, consisting of approximately 1,200 square feet between the two wings of the building's northeast section. In terms of Ian's common vehicular license, all kinds of alcoholic beverage license, with a uh, 10 o'clock restriction on serving and the placement of some sort of gate um, on, the walkway. on the walkway so there's no direct entrance to Front Street. Perfect. Second. Motion to be made and second, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I just want to make sure I understand. So the timing, I don't even know what the timing is, but the timing on the inside part stays the same. That's correct. Right. Okay. Is, has that been seconded? If not, I'll second it, it. It's been seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Right. <coughs> Back to the... Uh, to yeah. the sewers. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Roy. And the reason why I, I wanted just to discuss that was because Mr. Banger, maybe we should wait for Mr. Danahy, but um, Mr. Banger brought up the subject to the proviso that there not be another, that it be using existing spaghetti lines. Yeah. I think that's a, a, a great thing, but I just want to make sure that, I mean, is that de facto disapproving this? And if so, I'm fine with that, but I just need to know what I'm voting on. He already has permission. Great. Right. Fine. That's all I need all to right. know. Sorry someone, to keep you waiting. Someone for yell for John. Uh, motion. Uh, uh, move the board of selectmen vote to. Do you want to wait for John? for John? I wait for John. <laughs> 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 
Well, thanks for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Sorry about bringing this right right. back, but I just wanted to make sure right. I knew what I was voting on. It's quite all right. <coughs> Jamie, you're not looking for new sewer now, too, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Did we find John out there? Well, well, is it a big deal? I don't think so. I don't know how the huh? yeas or nays. Okay, maybe. Uh, well, wait. Yep. Chair, just just so you know, you inquired earlier about tight tanks. We had two down on Bayberry Road, which there's no sewer in that area. Yep. And just this past year, we were able to, with another neighbor that needed an upgrade. Uh, eliminate them by creating a shared system further up on that other yep. person's lot. And we also, uh, prior to this Rosalind Lane sewer project, we had a tight tank there as well because there was no access. I remember that one. Yeah. So it can be done. But the emergency sewer connection was a uh, tool that the DEP gave us yep. when the moratorium went. They're the ones that sort of have described part of how you can do it. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we have a motion? I haven't made it yet. Not yet. Uh, move the board select and vote to grant an emergency sewer tie in for A. Claymore Terrace. Second. Just discussion and briefly. I think I've made my point as, as, as clear as I can possibly make it. Um, going forward, it's, 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 we're going to have to look at this whole problem. And we're going to have to look at tag, tight tanks if that's the answer. Yeah. Um, you know, and I can't emphasize that enough. Tight tanks because they're 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 doable. Other places obviously use them. And secondly, secondly, my biggest scare is that the my concern about the <coughs> the usage at the sewer treatment plants just rising and rising and rising. And I understand. Uh, and I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. You, yep. you know that. We've talked yep. about it over the years. Yep. But the, the concern that I have is is that over the last decade, we've communicated a certain standard to the citizens of the town. And and that's, that was if, if you had to go on a tight tank, we'd give you an emergency connection. Yep. So I think we've got to well, realize that a lot of and people have relied we, on that. But, but things do change. Sure. Uh, motion was made and seconded, I believe. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, where are we? Number 10. Number 10. Sea walls. No. Oh. Good evening. Kevin, how are you? Hi, Kevin. Very good. Um, we go from one topic to another, sewer to sea walls. Um, I would like to make a slight change in, in what I had given the board for the executive action request. And um, I can explain that a little further. We have right now our apparent lowest responsible bidder for the seawall project, the small seawall project, is SM Lynch, which came in at 96,865. The second bidder, which is T Ford, came in at 115,340. T Ford has um, written us a letter of protest on the bid um, with regard to SM Lynch's proposal because of their minority participation. What they use is Jetaway, which is a, they use him as a stone hauler, and he's technically not classified as a stone hauler with Samba. So we've submitted all that information to Samba, and we're waiting on a, a response from Samba. Um, we've also submitted to the Attorney General and the Inspector General, looking for their input on which way this should go. So what I'm requesting is the Board of Selectmen um, vote to allow us to um, award the contract to the lowest responsible bidder in a sum not to exceed 115340, which is the second bidder. That way, if we have to throw out the first bidder, SM Lynch, we can proceed and award the contract. Kevin, um, I don't think you can do that. We can't if do that? If you protest with the bid, the board can't award the contract. Okay. Because all you're going to do is have them resend exactly what they award today at their next meeting. I know you're t on a time delay, and we talked about this via email today, but unless you know the specific vendor and they're free and clear with the protest pending, I can't advise that the board. Okay. Okay. And I apologize because I wasn't. <coughs> in the right. Office then today. can we just at this point um, vote to award the contract to S.M. Lynch and let it go into protest mode? 
No, what I'm saying is the board will take no action until the protest has been yeah. resolved. Okay. Because hasn't been it hasn't been filed yet until contract. until the contract was going to be awarded, from what Ford was saying. So they ha I thought they sent you a letter saying We have a protest. letter saying that they are protesting, but they're not officially protesting it to the Attorney General until we, if we award the contract. Okay, I thought they already sent a letter. No, it's not an official protest. Okay, then I withdraw and you can award the contract to who he recommends. The lowest bidder. Yep. And we'll have to re-bid it, uh, we'll have to re-award it. If the protest is if filed, If the IG's cares. office says that the mm -hmm. protest prevails, then you would rescind your vote and award yeah. it to but the But no work can well, be done going forward. We'll issue the notice to proceed. Yeah. We. We, could, we must say every bid I've ever bid, throw out, we have the right to reject any and all bids. So if it, doesn't, if it gets rejected that we can't give it to Lynch, we can throw them all out and rebid it, can't we? No. No. You're sure? Every bid I've ever done, is, they have every right to reject we, any we and all. Do that I know there could have, be a time. If we don't have the funds, we could, we could do that. We could show if we didn't have the funds, but then we couldn't turn around and, and rebid the contract. You would have to reject the bids if it was in the best interest of the town to do so. But right, you know, right now, we'd have to right. reject you every bid. If you have a second bid. bona fide bid and they met all the requirements, then it's you know you'd have to justify all right. why you wouldn't want to move forward. So I again, I apologize. I misunderstood that. I thought they had formally registered. They were just giving you a heads up. They're giving us a okay. heads up that they're going to do it, and in, in they're waiting if we were going to do it. Yep, they were going so. to put the formal. Um, okay. well, they might not. They might not. They might not. But the. But then again, part of the problems that, that's my concern is this is money that we received from a storm from 2007 that we haven't spent it yet. Yes. And it's a smaller FEMA project. Yes. I want to show goodwill that we're doing the work. Yes. Because I've, we've already submitted for an extension. We haven't received it yet from FEMA. Yes. And we've got all that other money hanging out there with FEMA that we haven't been able to settle on what yes. they're going to do for the larger portion of the contracts. Sure. That's why I'm. You know, if we get it, Understood. I want to jump right on it and do right. the work. So if we do make this award and it gets challenged, you're clearly off the hook in terms of, like, making good effort. But it's certainly not your fault that it's getting challenged. So. I think we've yeah. done our due diligence and, sure. and made every attempt to. But M Motion? I'd just, I just like to yeah. scope the pro just the pro what the project is. Um, you have it's a pretty a good idea. But. I've looked at too many sections. It's uh, a small <laughs> area in Humrock. Um, over by the lighthouse point area, the corner there at that first house to the left of the lighthouse. And um, there's one other smaller section that I, that's, it's in minor, a small minor. section of minor. Okay. Because there were six or seven spots, weren't there? There, there were originally, yes, there were a lot more. This is the smaller portion, it's only worth $100,000, but until we had all that money settled with FEMA because they changed what they were gonna appropriate us, um, they had given us the hundred thousand or the seventy-five thousand dollars to do these phases already. So I want to show um, that, that we're making every effort. And then the other sections we get done down the road, or? provided provided we get the extensions and, and all the money and everything else, and they settle on what the funds are. Um, the last time it went out, they they changed the funding, and we didn't have funding to do them all. We would have to skip a couple projects. Yeah. So since then, we've got that grant from the DCR for fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, which will, you know, supplement that money. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the revetment repair project to SM Lynch Corp of Weymouth, Massachusetts for a total bid price of $96,865 with payment to be made at the unit prices and or lump sum prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, 100% performance and 100% labor and materials bond. Second. Uh, discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. The uh, water f main flushing program, L. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Um, I direct your attention to the map on the wall. I'm going to talk about what causes brown water briefly and what we're doing about it. Norman? Like Norman causes the brown water? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this looks like a map of situate streets. It's not. It's a map of situate pipes. It actually looks like a spider web, which is more appropriate a way of describing how water is distributed in the town of Situate. There, there, the, uh, it's unlike in your house where a pipe goes directly to your faucet. In Situate, pipes all over town are feeding faucets throughout the town. If you'll notice, the blue dots I've got right here indicate where water comes from. 
And over here is generally where the majority of the population of the town is located, where water goes to. Sometimes the water in this area is being serviced in a pipe through here. Sometimes it's serviced in a pipe through here. Sometimes it comes this way, and sometimes it will come this way, all associated with shifts in demand in different parts of the town. If you live, for instance, on Greenfield Lane, sometimes the pipe is the water in the pipe is going from north to south, and sometimes it's going from south to north. In other words, it's constantly changing direction in town. The, the reason I'm pointing out that, that is that the, the water we have in situate uh, is generally groundwater, which comes uh, through the rocks and contains a lot of dissolved iron. We drink this dissolved iron every day. However, what happens is uh, the dissolved iron is oxidized and becomes iron oxide and becomes a little heavier. And if the water is moving slowly, it will settle into the bottom of the pipes and become little rocks like this. These little rocks of dissolved uh, of, of iron oxide. When it settles in the pipes, our water looks like this. Nice clear water is delivered to all the homes. Okay. However, when there's a disturbance in the pipes, such as um, a fire occurs and a hydrant is opened, or there's a dramatic shift in supply or de in demand rather, because it's uh, the 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 uh, it's now the summer and there's twice the flow or, or there is um, a water main break, then that water gets, sh moves in a different direction and look what happens. The iron oxide is stirred up. This is a real example from a recent uh, situation in town where we just collected a sample and you notice that the, the iron oxide will settle out. <clears throat> what we have to do about that is exercise our pipes more often, flush them in other words. Um, what we're doing this year is an extensive flushing program during the daytime. This was established by our, uh, the, the interim uh, water division superintendent, um, Jamie DeBarros, who would be here this evening, except he is attending to a, a, a family matter, a, a, a death of a close associate's friend, daughter, um, and has developed a section-by-section uh, -section plan for how we flush these pipes. Now, in the past, uh, the town has done some flushing of pipes, but quite frankly, it hasn't been to the degree that this military operation basically is underway, where it was very deliberate moving up street by street, hydrant by hydrant flushing. And you'll see this uh, ex being done throughout town. You'll see some, some hydrants being flushed with a lot of brown water coming out. The, in order to alert um, people that this is happening, there's an extensive uh, public notice system, uh, door hangers being hung on doors. You've seen the sign around town. There's a door by door knocking on doors to tell people that their neighborhood is being flushed today. Uh, WATD and, and Channel 10 and the newspapers are publishing where we're, where we're doing the flushing. Thus far, we've completed Route 3A, Old Oak and Bucket, Stockbridge Road, and the Driftway, critical pipes in town because they are main feeders for our communities. Additionally, we've done, almost all, we've done the side streets on all of those uh, main thoroughfares. Uh, beginning this week, we're going to be doing the harbor. We're doing the harbor, though, at nighttime because of the impact on businesses. And again, businesses and, and residents will know when, when their area is being flushed. And then we'll move on and doing the cliffs, which are fed from those main lines going off of uh, the driftway. We'll continue to do this through mid-May, at which time we'll stop flushing because the demand of the system becomes so high, we won't have enough water to supply the demand of the summer which is a higher demand plus twice, nearly twice the population, uh, and also do flushing. We'll then resume flushing in the fall, and then start all over again next spring with flushing. And we expect to see this fall uh, much less residue, and in the spring, again, much less residue. And we think we have this problem knocked, uh, but it's a very extensive hands-on labor-intensive effort. But I think part of it is a lot of catch-up. <coughs> the second thing we're doing is um, water main replacement. We have a whole network of pipes installed in 1901, which were cast iron, and in the 1950s, the system of transite pipes, which are very prone to breaking. We have 45 breaks per year. Basically, we have a water main break per week. Every time there's a water, water main break, pipes get stirred up, brown water appears. Um, so the water main breaks are affecting not only the brown water, but also affect service outages. So that's why we are and you have appropriated and town meeting has agreed to uh, pay for a one and a half million dollars of pipe replacement per year. Could we use more money for pipe replacement? Yes. 
would we be able to do much more in a year? Perhaps not, because pipe replacement then results in us shutting down sections of town so that we can then replace the pipe. So we're probably on a, about the right program, which is funded by uh, water rate increases, which we'll be discussing with you uh, in June. Uh, priority is also being given to wherever we do road work, we replace the pipes in the road if, they're, if they need it. So we may shift attention from an area we thought we were going to do to an area where we're going to do major road work so we don't have to reopen that road to do pipes in the future. A lot of work, but very high priority for the water department. There are people there who make excellent water for us. They hate it when it doesn't satisfy the end user. They hate it when it comes out brown. Um, everyone is trying to hold the uh, calm and peaceful during this process. The flushing has gone well. We had, unfortunately had a couple of very ma main breaks which stirred things up and we had to divert away from flushing. But uh, the water division uh, is thoroughly committed to flushing, pipe replacement, and delivering good water to every resident in town. So I wanted to give you that update. Just quickly before we get to comments from the board, just uh, one word answer, please. Are there any health issues related with the brown water? None whatsoever. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the board? Are you going to drink that? Are you going to drink that out? Um, I, I just no. was going to say <laughs> that <laughs> I'll wait a minute now. I want to see this. <laughs> there you go. Oh, he is. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, I'm convinced. I'm there, you go. there you go. There you go. Absolutely well, right. <coughs> Mr. Harris. Al. <laughs> you know CPR. <laughs> Something back there. No, but uh, Al raised a good point. I mean, I, I tour the water plant at one time, and uh, it does leave the facility crystal clear. And it is discouraging to the employees that work as hard as they can to, to have stuff like this happen. And I just want to say one other um, point. It has to do with the flushing during the daytime. This is the first time we've done it. Hey, it, it might not work, but at least we're trying something different. And there's some pros to it. You know, it's, it's it, number one, safety rather than flushing them at night. Number two, you know, it, it's, it's possibly could reduce overtime. It, if it doesn't work, you, you change it. But it, I, I applaud you and the department for, for trying it, you know. Thank you for coming. And I, I, you know, I don't think I've seen that recently anyway. It's, I, thank you. There are some audience people. We're going to go through the board first, then we'll get to the audience. Oh, no, I just wanted to say. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John or Tony? No, just no, a quick question. Now, yeah. When you flush the system, are you actually trying to blow that stuff that you drank out through the, yes. through the hydrant? Yeah. So that's the. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. We're, you know, you'll see it at a hydrant. You see brown, brown water. What we're, well, by, by creating turbulence in the line, it's a little bit like, you know, if you have a perfectly clean house, you think. Uh, you've got papers on the desk, everything's laying around. And if you came in with a leaf blower into your house, your house would be a mess. Okay, that's basically what we're trying to do in the water lines is blow the water lines out, stir up all the residue that's settled in there, and get it on out of the line. And then if we didn't flush for a couple of years, more and more would settle on out. The problem is it settles out in, in times of slow water movement, which is in the winter. It'll settle out because the water's lazily moving along. Mm -hmm. And then summer comes along, and it, it gets shaken up. Thanks. And it'll come out eventually. And you drink it every day, even when it looks clear. It's the same iron. Just uh, Sean? Just one other quick comment. And, I, and when we were addressing this, I think it was on Third Cliff when we were doing the sewer project up there, and then a lot of residents had brown water. I think it was Gene that came before us and said that the wells during the summer, when levels are down, you have to replenish the wells so often. Is that another reason why you can get brown water? The demand is increasing in the summer. Yeah, Levels, that supplies that, down. I can't answer that technically. I know in the summer we're using a lot more surface water uh, than we do otherwise. We, it's groundwater is uh, less expensive to produce. It's, it's, a, it's actually a purer water than surface water because there's some right. issues with surface water. You can think of birds and all that stuff, right? Um, but and then, and then we have to go through then a purification process, whereas groundwater just needs a little chlorination added to it. All right. All right? Um, yeah. So uh, one thing we're f we find in the system by flushing, <clears throat> and particularly we find this in the daytime, is that um, there are situations where valves were uh, are closed or opened that we thought were opened or closed, okay, resulting in dislocations of where water is flowing and in create, creating dead ends, dead loops. Mm -hmm. Also, there are a lot of side streets that were put in with two or three houses on it, a big fat water line, and 
not much usage, and those are dead ends. This is why the water division has been so set against uh, requiring looping right, of right. pipes. And I, I'm surprised, surprised also how I found where there are older subdivisions where looping was done through, through easements, through other areas. I mean, done the right way. And I think we are much more adamant now on the quality of pipe and the ability of water to flow in those pipes so that we can provide fresh water not only to the people on those pipes, but on other areas of those pipes when mm -hmm. that gets stirred up. Back out again. Yeah. My, my only other comment before I get out there in the audience is that I think your team has done a great job in um, raising awareness and the, the door hangers and the signs around town. It's, it's a marked improvement. I just want to thank you for that. Well, that, that is the water department's uh, doing entirely. It's led by uh, the foreman and the, and the interim supervisor. That's been their decision to do it this way, and, and they've done a great it, job. It's great stuff. That's all I was going to say is we had it done on Stockbridge. It was a freeze. It was during the day. It was no big deal at all. You know, we were already having a place. He was saying yeah. what would be a water a day. It was no big deal. It was great. It's right. great. Quick. Yeah. Done, done. Right. Any other comments from the audience, <laughs> ma'am? I think the water department handled it very well. I have yeah. business at the harbor, and I live close to the harbor. And it has communication, you know, Billy walking around with those, yep. handing them out, being very, not answering questions. Everyone, you know, they Good. deserve a lot of praise for Great. the job Thank you. All right. <coughs> Thank you, Al. Thank you. Uh, we're on to agenda item 13, Mr. Norton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Sure. The duathlon. Duathlon. Thank you. Thank you for coming back again. Oh, thank you for having us again. Uh, I hope that you guys had the packet that I had sent to uh, Kim uh, last week. Um, I'm not going to read that whole thing, but I wanted to make sure you had it. Um, yes. In that packet, we tried to... Uh, be fairly thorough about what I'm going to very quickly summarize for you tonight because I want to leave some time for you guys to have uh, questions. Um, with respect to the duathlon, um, we basically coming here tonight uh, to, again, try to gain your approval for the race this year uh, in October, October 17th, Sunday, uh, in the morning, starting at 9 a.m. Um, the goals for the race have always from the very beginning of starting the race have been very simple. To make a high quality charity race to support local residents and families, um, to expose people in Situate and the South Shore from well beyond our town to Situate and put us on the map and put another feather in the cap of Situate uh, as a town in the South Shore. To educate the public on the challenges of special needs kids and adults with developmental disabilities, uh, specifically in our area but generally as well and to bring outside interest to Situate, promote tourism, promote commerce, and uh, that's in the form of racers, spectators, residents alike. Um, at the last presentation, uh, there were a number of things that came to, to terms. Um, I'll name the three that I think were the most important. Um, to show written or substantive proof that our community supports this race, which is something that, like I said last time, we didn't portray purposely on paper because I first didn't think it was necessary. Obviously it was. I wanted to make sure we did that. And in your packet, I think we have 17 or 18 uh, emails which are a sampling of all the things we got when we reached out to people, both residents, racers, community members, merchants that support our race. Um, to explain, uh, number two, to explain how the race is supporting not just anybody, but local people, local merchants, local businesses, local charities, local residents. And number three, to better understand and show um, how we plan to improve the race, how we plan to try and work with the merchants, which is obviously the main constituency that had trouble with the race last year, uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page going forward. Um, to those three points, um, the local people that support us. Um, it's in your packet. I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, hopefully there's plenty of proof there. These are people that live in town, work in town, own shops in town. These are people that race. These are people that didn't race. Um, specifically, I'll name two people. One is a local physician who has a number of patients that he tries to get to run the race from a health standpoint. He works here in, in Situate. There's another from a, a lady that didn't come from here. She's from Connecticut. She came here for the first time last year. She's buying a summer home here because of the race. Um, I can name a number of other people that actually shopped in the harbor on that day, which I think is saying a lot. It was a terrible, terrible day. 
uh, from a weather perspective. Uh, in terms of supporting local people, there are 6,500 people. I've, I've done some research since we last spoke. Um, 6,500 families in the South Shore and South Coast that have adults with developmental disabilities or kids with developmental disabilities. These are people that are directly affected and benefited by Friendship Home, which is the charity that we support. From those 6,500 families, 20 of them specifically are families that live in <coughs> Situate, that use the Friendship Home branch that is in Situate on a, on a bi-monthly, uh, bi two times a month basis to help their kids and adults gain access to friends, to society, to uh, events, to work programs, et cetera. Those are people in our town. Um, and obviously Friendship Home, uh, I think many of you already know about it, is a, a local organization. It's the only organization we plan on supporting this year with 100% of our proceeds. And it's an organization that's less than five miles from where we're sitting right now that supports us. So it's a very, very local uh, organization. Uh, as far as improvements on the race, we've gone through this, but um, again, we're planning on doing it on a Sunday. Obviously, Saturday did not work. We admit that. We knew that the day after the race, um, so we're planning it on a Sunday. There are approximately one-tenth or less than one-tenth of the harbor merchants that are open on Sunday before noon, and we will be gone just about noontime. Of the people that are there that are open, which is a perfectly legitimate point, I would say that with one-tenth of the businesses open, that means you have approximately one-tenth of the traffic, which means you have less people trying to get in and out of the harbor, which means you have less need for parking spaces, you have less need for those major roadways that supposedly were so choked up. And I can go on and on about that, but I think that makes the point. Um, and finally, um, in terms of the, the venue itself and the logistics, like I said, it's a first-year race. This will be our second year. You learn a lot when you see it live, and we did learn a lot. We've made improvements on the police plan, which we are still going through today. Um, becoming on a Sunday morning, we really feel that we would be uh, affecting very few people, both residents and merchants alike, and we have a better plan to, to affect them less live this year. Um, the last point I want to make uh, is that we are certainly here to try and gain approval for that race. That being said, the last thing that you guys did mention to us, uh, and we've heard from the merchants as well, was to try and explore other options. We did that. We've looked at Egypt Beach, we've looked at North Situate, we've looked at the train station, we've looked at Peggotty Beach, all of which seem at very first glance to have enough parking space to put a tent and some cars. But in many ways uh, that I'm welcome to go through, none of those venues really provided a place that we felt we could do this race uh, safely, effectively, and to showcase the town in a way that we really feel honestly we want to do. The only other place that we came up with um, that, that we feel it's, it's doable is something I'm very happy to go into uh, right now if you'd like. I'm prepared to do that, but I wanted to get a feel for whether that's necessary or whether we can approve this race because it is our absolute preference to run it out of Cole Parkway. Why don't you, I won't, unless the board feels differently, why don't you give the whole presentation, see, maybe we can work some options and sure. combine them. Who knows what we can do? Sure, do you have the Maybe not. Map? Yeah. Unless the board, what's, what's, what's oh, the board pledge? Right? I, I, want to I just it. have one, one really quick question. Sure. When we left here last time, you were going to meet with the merchants? I did. And I just need to hear the outcome, of, because that may make my decision up. What, what, did the, what was the result of your next meeting with the merchants? Well, I find myself in a difficult position, because my personal opinion is that that meeting was not very pleasant. It was fairly antagonistic. Um, I don't feel that the merchants, and by merchants I mean the Harbor Merchants Association, um, gave us to a certain extent a fair shake to really explain how much we have tried to do to work with them and to try and change the race this year to work with them. Uh, I think they focused very much so on last year's race, which had four or five major challenges. Um, so to be honest, it wasn't a great meeting. Um, but we did do it. We came away with what we hoped were some positive feedback points for ourselves, and we've been continuing to work with, uh, with those things to make a new plan and to explore other options uh, since then. Okay. 
Would the board like to hear the other options? Yeah, I, I think that makes I sense. I guess sure. that's... Uh, to give you a quick rundown, the other option that we came up with was to run it out of, and I, I apologize, I don't know if there's a technical name for it, the green, but the, the Lawson Tower green, the large park, not Cent the elephant central, park. Central but Central Field. Central Field, um, which is the large fenced area in front of Lawson Tower by the library. It's a, it's a large field, plenty large to hold you mean the, the soccer field? The soccer field, okay. the baseball field. I just field. want to make sure I knew what I was talking yep. about. You were talking in, about. Yep. Inside the fence there. Gotcha. Yep. Um, it's a large field, plenty large to hold the venue, both both the racers and, the, and most of the on-site spectators. Um, plenty of space and availability for the tents that would need to be put into the ground, which was an issue last year, which we would need to address. Um, has, to my understanding so far, uh, plenty of available parking. It would have to be split up, but it's something we could do among the uh, perpendicular parking along that roadway, which is not a road per se, it's enclosed, which means with, uh, to my understanding so far from the police perspective, we wouldn't even need police stopping traffic there because it's not a drive-through road per se. So we could have volunteers closing off traffic inside that area to racers and uh, spectators and merchants, or uh, what do you call them? Mm -hmm. uh, people that are vendors. <coughs> um, then we have the library parking lot, which on a Sunday morning I imagine would be uh, somewhat flexible. We have gates and the, and the multiple parking lots over there. And then like we did last year, we could look for other options like the train station, but I don't know that that would be necessary based on the traffic, uh, the, sorry, the parking usage last year. We feel that we could probably park uh, just about 100% of our um, on-site spectators and racers in the near area there. From a safety standpoint, it's very safe. The whole, the whole field is fenced in with a six-foot tall fence, which means spectators and racers feel very comfortable with kids and adults and racers and bikes and everything else. There is access on and off the field that could be uh, safely controlled. Uh, it's a little tight getting in and out, but there, we have a plan that we could work uh, with the board and with the DPW, et cetera, to try and make sure that access is, is safe and secure and open. Uh, and then from a race perspective, the, the race has three parts, two runs, run, then bike, then run. The, uh, the bike would essentially stay the same. Aside from the fact that you'd be leaving that field and coming back to that field, the loop would essentially stay the same going around uh, Situate. And I can name the roads if you'd like, but it's essentially uh, going up Country Way to Hollett to um, uh, down to North Situate and mine it to uh, Hatherley down to the harbor, through the harbor, down the driftway, and back around. We would have to change it slightly coming back towards the field, and we're working on multiple different ways, and the police obviously have to prove that pattern. Uh, then the two runs. The two runs w couldn't be similar, which is one of the main problems with that venue. Could you um, put that up again while he's talking? Would you mind this is our map from the, the chair? old. This is our old map from the the existing route. Okay. So we would be. So for the new runs would. So be. the new run we would be staging. Sorry, I'm getting my bearings here. There we go. We'd be staging here. Yeah. So you'd be leaving up Country Way, joining the course, coming back around through the course, and then most likely taking the I think it's Common Drive, coming back to uh, Gates. Yeah. Sorry. That's the bike. Yes, Cudworth, thank you. That's the bike you just said. That would be right? the bike. Yeah. The runs are, are a little bit different because obviously on a, on a one mile and a 5K run, which are the, the current distances of the race, you're not going to get down to the lighthouse and you're not going to get down to the harbor, which obviously from a race perspective, from a tourism perspective, from a showcasing the town perspective, we don't like because we want people to see our harbor, our town, our beaches, our, our, our beautiful scenic pieces of town. Uh, hosting it by Lawson Tower at least gives us the view of the tower, which is a, a key landmark in town. But the runs would have to basically be internal here. Um, but they're the same individuals, right, who are running and biking, so roughly with the bike thing they would, would get down to the harbor, at least somewhat. Well, you're going to basically see the harbor as you pass Pier 44 and as you turn off of Jericho past the boat ramp as opposed to seeing the whole stretch of the harbor coming towards right. uh, Jericho Road and the entire cliffs. Understood. So I think it's a substantially less scenic course. Okay. Um, this, of all the races I've done, of all the races that Bill as a director has, has directed, it really is a top-notch course. But we understand, obviously, there are other factors like the merchants and such. 
And so we've done our best to come up with a course layout that essentially takes us through Front Street, uh, but it would be only on bikes. We wouldn't be parking cars there. We wouldn't be stopping and standing there. And essentially what we would propose to do would be to spread out the run waves, which means when people start the race, so that there are breaks between bikers, which means that some of the choke points for traffic, you would have a much easier time with police letting cars through in waves to make sure there's no long backups in, in traffic. Um, I don't know how much more detail you'd like me to get in that uh, secondary that plan. The, if I could just ask the plan B, for lack of a plan B, would eliminate the harbor. Not completely, but it would eliminate would eliminate staging it there. Would el okay, would st okay. Instead of all the people gathering at Cole Park. Essentially, the remainder of what we would do in the harbor would be to right bike through the harbor right. one direction, one time. Yeah. The only, and I commend you for, for, for changing, uh, taking the, the uh, suggestion about looking at Sunday rather than Saturday. I think that was a major, major step to um, placating the, the merchants, or most of them anyway. Doing that does bring its own little set of problems, and that's churches. Mm -hmm. You have right near that staging area, you have one, two, two or three right off the bat that I could think mm -hmm. of. Because you have St. Mary's, which would be affected down the harbor, mm -hmm. if only by the bikers. Yeah, and I can certainly address that. Yeah. Obviously, on Sunday morning, we have churches. Yeah. Um, just like merchants present the challenge being on Front Street, churches present the challenge being on Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, churches are mainly... First of all, fixed time schedules that yep. we can actually anticipate and plan for, number one. Number two, uh, there are numerous churches. The only one that so far we would affect with the original course is St. Mary's. Right. Because all the other churches actually are outside that right. course line, yep. um, with the exception of the church by Lawson Tower, the uh, Unitarian Church. Yep. And that church um, shouldn't be affected directly except for maybe if there's a service, and this is one that I haven't found the exact service schedule for, but okay. if there were a service that coincides with the bikers coming through Ronnie Shones, mm -hmm. there may be something we have to work around, but that can be addressed with scheduling the race properly. Okay. Um, the new venue, Plan B, would encounter more churches. Um, it's one challenge that, that we would have to work through, and one of the reasons we like the original course is that we've seen it. We saw it happen. There were a bunch of problems. We feel we've really worked hard to address those, and we're ready for seeing this, this better plan work. Plan B is something that we haven't seen live, which means we're back to the drawing board, and we have great ideas and great anticipation of scheduling and such, but we still have a, a new plan. Um, if, if Al were to tell you that all those water pipes were all of a sudden going to run specifically one way, we'd have to wait and see if it works. Um, and, and in the same way, we'd much rather build on an existing plan to improve it vastly than start over again. But we do feel we're prepared to do that if that is what the board would prefer. Thank you. Um, discussion from the board. Sean. I was just going to mention that, uh, you know, the alternative plan and the staging on Central Field would have to, you know, consult Paul Sherry, the field coordinator. There must be some type Softball. of soccer. Softball. Soccer is mostly on Saturdays. I, I'm well, sure still, there's I mean, we some have, kind of schedule. We have yeah. someone in that position right. to tell right. you, you know. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That was yeah, obviously know. working with direct department um, is, is, is part of what we did last year. It's part of what we're doing again this year. But Right. With the second plan, you also have it at Gates. If you're going to stage at Gates, there's also people trying to get up to those fields as well. But Paul would know that. Yeah. Right. That was, that was the only thing that jumped out. Discussion the board through the discussion? The other thing I thought about the field would be wear and tear on the field. Um, that might be something if you got a whole bunch of people walking and all that sort of stuff on the field. But it's just something to be able to say that you've considered and spoken to people. It's something about. we've already tried to start considering, and uh, it's a fair point, uh, certainly something we've thought of. Um, typically, most people playing soccer are wearing cleats. There's people in running sneakers. So yeah, right. typically, the wear should be the same yeah, or less, maybe. in my opinion, but it's something we're looking at. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just saying if it's a muddy day and you have people with bikes on. Absolutely. Stuff. If we got a day like today or like last year's race, it would be a consideration, yeah, and that's yeah. something we have sure. to, to um, think about. Overall, Nico, I, I, um, I really 
deeply appreciate all the effort you've done in listening to what people have said. When you were last here, I sort of let off the discussion and was quite negative about what happened last year and, you know, indicated that I wasn't going to support, you know, last year round two again. And I'm really pleased to see, and I also appreciate your candor describing the meeting that you had with the, with the harbor merchants, okay? Um, and I like the creativity you've done here. Um, since we last met, I went around and spoke to a lot of the merchants, and in particular the restaurants, because a lot of the merchants, I think you've solved the problem with purely by the timing, Sunday morning, as you said. I mean, most of the merchants are going to be closed. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the restaurants are open, and Sunday morning is a really important um, time for them for brunch and, and uh, you know, family breakfasts and so on. Um, so that would be another thing that's negatively impacted when you're looking at the at the trade-offs. Um, I hadn't considered that the churches, particularly in the context of Plan B here, um, you know, there's no ideal time to do it, clearly. Um, but I, I like what you're doing, and uh, I don't I don't know if we're going to be voting tonight or, or not. But I just wanted to say I like the progress you're making on this. Uh, I think all the positives that you mentioned are, are real and accurate, um, and uh, so, you know, I, I'm not, on my part, prepared to sign off on this until I hear more from town people and so on, but um, I, I just like the direction this is going. And I reserve the right to say no when we hear a final plan, but uh, this is big progress. I came in tonight thinking, you know, no way, and, I, and I'm no longer thinking that. My suggestion would be to, I like Plan B, Bill and, and Nico. I think that might be the better of the two options, and I yeah. think, um, um, obviously, I think <coughs> The question that runs through my head is, by going to option B, um, the impact it may have on, on the services. Once we have that idea, logistically you're able to kind of pinpoint the course, you understand the, the nature of the riders, how quickly they can get between a certain time period, the impact it may have based on that. Um, then I think I'd be inclined to say that, you know, I'm supportive of it. Um, I think probably in, in light of the, in the wake of last year's um, event, which I think it was admirable, I, I think the impact is probably too much for downtown at this point. And I, I would probably suggest opting to go to Plan B to try to build that as your base going forward, providing it doesn't have the impact that maybe it, it the negative impact of that, that it had for the downtown area. That, that would be my preference, I think. Um, but um, I think shifting it from a Saturday to a Sunday is better. Doing it earlier in the morning makes sense, obviously. Um, and um, it's a great course, it's a great event, it's another event that I think it certainly showcases the town. Um, obviously any event that we have has some impacts, negative impacts, and they're positive, but you know, the impact, and I think by moving it to a Sunday and, and trying to shift it a little bit would have a better impact. That, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. From the floor, from the audience, any comments? All work. <laughs> Go in into it. I, I, I will agree that they're definitely trying, and I think I can speak enough for the merchants to say that we appreciate that. Uh, there was some contentiousness at the meeting, no question about it. But I think, too, that we weren't, he didn't have apparently that, pro, that plan that he presented to you at the time. He did not have plan B. And I think I'm safe enough in talking that in general, as far as the city with harbor merchants, and this has been discussed by us previously, that if the event were not staged in city with harbor, and perhaps only passed quickly through front street, that I don't see that the merchants have a serious objection to that, especially on the Sunday morning. I know I wouldn't. And I don't think that many of the <coughs> restaurants or the primary uh, would be primarily impacted. But I think a quick run through would be acceptable. Uh, I don't doubt the, the charitable aspect of this. Uh, but the other side of it, too, since we have emergence, you know, we got stung last year, so understand we're not necessarily jumping on this bandwagon without some concern. And I think that in the main, the harbor area is captured enough 
by other events that generally are strongly supported by the merchant, but nonetheless have an impact. And I think that enough is enough is a statement that we could make without rancor or anger. Simply stating that uh, <coughs> we have a beautiful town and a beautiful harbor, but as the uh, water pipe chart shows, it's the most impacted, congested part of town. No matter what day and time you try to do anything down there. Uh, plan B sounds good to me, and I, I would personally try to sell it to anyone in the merchants that had a problem with it, but I don't think anybody's going to. And I would strongly recommend that the board seriously consider Plan B. Thank, thank you for your for your uh, candor. That's it's great, and that's uh, I think very much of the input that I was looking for because it's. it's I guess does the board have any further comments? Or I could like like just like to make a suggestion. Uh, the only thing that I, I think uh, that Plan B is going to have more conflicts than we're thinking of right now in right. terms of different events that are going on and sporting facilities and where you're staging all this sort of stuff. I think recreation, as Sean mentioned, is going to have a lot of games going on, a lot of fields, and it's going to, you know, the first event upset the merchants. The second event has the potential of upsetting the, the residents. Um, so, you know, I just think that has to be vetted out a little bit more. Um, I agree with the first year, you're going to have your problems in your first year. You're going to fix the easy ones easily. You couldn't have a worse day to do it. You know, I read all the things from the merchants. They were all upset because they didn't have any sales. You know, the weather was so terrible, so that wasn't going to be a booming day for sales anyways. But um, all, all I thing that keeps coming to my head is all the letters person after person after person on the harbor that didn't you know didn't support the event because of of the impact it had on the business so um, what I don't want to happen is take that negativity and pass it on to the residents and then year two you know have the other group of of citizens uh, upset so um, you know really look closely you know Joe brought up a good point with the churches and the fields you know the library is not going to be real happy with the using theirs but you know you've got to really go to all those entities and see what what is going on before um, before plan B is uh, I understand that yeah. and I think it puts us in a challenging scenario in that uh, I completely understand that the churches have to be figured out I understand that the, the new police plan for this map needs to be finished and worked out uh, rec needs to be addressed um, you know and there are other and there are some other issues that we've already identified that need to be addressed uh, the challenge we have is that um, not to mm -hmm. this isn't a flea market where you put up a stand and then see if somebody shows up um, this is something that requires literally months and months of planning and at this point um, we really are under the gun to make sure that we actually can register hundreds of people to show up that day because unlike people that are trying to figure out what they're going to do tomorrow in town people sign up for these races we were planning to open hopefully January 1st or February 1st it's now going to be May 1st uh, and we still haven't even opened registration to our first wave of, of racers uh, in order to meet the budget we need to be able to actually make money to give to charity we need to be able to start gaining sponsorships gaining racers organizing people, uh, organizing volunteers. Uh, it really is an undertaking. And while I completely understand the need to address those issues, and, and I hope we've shown you in the past that, that we're serious about how we address these issues, um, we really do need some idea of, if not getting approval for the event, at least in a preliminary sense, pending these items, I, that I think, we have a timetable for when we can open registration. I think, you know, yeah, yeah, I think what I'm hearing is you're not getting a red light saying stop. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily getting a green light saying full speed ahead. It's kind of a yellow light saying proceed, but, you know, get these issues dealt with. There is a, I'm going to call it the Council of Churches, not the right word. There is an association of churches. You may be able to make one phone call, one visit to the, the chairman, and, and they may be able to do some of your legwork as far as the churches are concerned. One call to the recreation department, or one visit uh, to Paul Sherry might tell you whether there's a game's going to be scheduled in that field. October, I guess, will be fall sock. I don't know. I don't anticipate well, my, some yeah. of those things to be difficult to tackle in terms of making those phone calls. Yeah. What I'm saying is that 
I can't tell 300 people that give me $60 each, well, we ran into a snag in July and then we ran into one yep. in August. I think so if I have to come, in other words, you're looking for some kind of certainty. We're it's looking for some period. kind of, we're looking for some kind of pending approval or, or uh, I don't know the wording. Some, some, I have no problem if you put it on a hold basis pending wreck churches and, and a police plan, et cetera. There can be more. But I have to have some, on, some knowledge that I can email 3,000 people May 1st and say, we're accepting, you know, we're accepting sponsors' donations and money for basically what ends up being a non-refundable registration fee. It's, it's not as I easy only, as saying, I'll yeah. get back to you every two weeks. That's I understand hard. that, but I guess, I don't mean to be the downer, but the, if the merchants don't want it and the citizens don't want it, this may not be the best venue for this. And that, I think that's what we're going to probably hear on the street over the next four weeks as people see this in the paper and see it on TV, and they're going to say, you know, Sunday mornings I do this, and this is going to disturb this. And, th and that's really what I think we have to make our decision on. We're not against the race, but Which if we get, we get 20 letters from the merchants that are against it, and we get all phone calls from residents and rec that are against it, then it's just situate may not be the right town for it. Which is honestly why our preference would be to use an improved plan from last year as opposed to change it all and find new obstacles. Understood. But I don't think, Nick, a lot of due respect, we're not, we're not going to be going back, I think, right now. I don't want to speak for the board, but I know I'm not going to be going back to the plan of going through the harbor. And I think, as Mr. Norton said, you're not getting a red light here. You're not getting a green light that we're saying yes. We're saying, I sort of hear cautious optimism here, that there's, there's potential here on this. I'm not going to be sitting here saying, go ahead and tell 3,000 racers in four days that this is going to happen. If you want to, that's fine. You know, that's your decision as you guys run in the race. But so you know, you've, heard, you've heard what I've said about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I got cautious optimism. I had one other question for you. You may have said this in passing. Did you consider the MBTA parking lot? Yes, okay, that's not we cool. did. It's, okay. it's a really a bad location fine, I just wanted to for a number of reasons. Yeah. Okay, um, because that would be a for way staging from, area? For staging area. That's what I was thinking, because it's away from churches. It's big. It's right next to the rotary. It's really a dead zone. Uh, you have nothing of interest there other than what we provide, which I don't think showcases anything like Situate. Um, and and even though there's lots of park parking there, we had to fight extremely hard to get them to approve the parking there last year. And the budget that they would probably charge us this year to park cars there would pretty much outstrip us of any charities. My, okay. my, might I suggest, I, I, you know, I just um, wanted that clarification. Yep. Thank you. I'm not sure our next scheduled meeting. I know we probably the, there's going to be a reorganization on the. And the next uh, one probably could, it could be done. Uh, and I, the eighth, <laughs> ninth, probably be the one after 11, that, which would probably be the 18th. The next time the board we have meetings the 11th and the 25th. Uh, I think 25th. Because you've got a special town meeting on the 17th. Right? Yeah. yeah. So probably the 25th would be. Yeah. Might I suggest that, you know, maybe if it's the board's willing and if the applicant is to, to, to reconvene on the 25th for a final decision on the issue with the prospect that you think about <coughs> retooling it through Plan B with the options, touching base with Paul Sherry. Well, we just have to do an amended application. This yeah. is the first I've heard of it. Okay. So it needs and to go through the department. Go through everybody. Yeah. And by the 25th so we can take a look at that and then ultimately I think that would be a final decision. I, if, if whatever the board should make a final decision at that time, that would be my I, suggestion. Yes. Trisha, how long do we need for that application? Because I understand that if we submit a new application for just this an amended course, application on the other, how long do you think? The roots will we the have same, time to get that through the departments by? Oh sure, okay. sure, that shouldn't be an issue at all. That would be my suggestion, and take a look at it. Okay, do we? We'll, we'll talk about it. All right. Yeah. Well, that's. I think I'm getting a feel from the board that we're just not ready to make a decision based on the the things that have to be done on Plan B and in Plan A, we've got the merchant's approval, but only if it's Plan B. And, and, and so, uh, do we know what Plan A is? I'm well, it would, it'd be the same as last year, I guess. But the time, what time, the time would be, would be Sunday, Sunday at nine o'clock, finished before noon, yeah. as opposed yeah. to Saturday, so ten thirty, finishing at yeah. twelve forty. Correct. Those were exactly the people I yeah. circled with. Which is um, the thing that came up at Armory Clarity of one of the merchants. 
well, the thing that come up at the meeting is um, there was a lot of people at the last meeting. It was it's just a hot thing. It was a it really. Was I was just tough, being honest. Tough thing. No, it was. It was tough. It was tough. Um, nobody really wants the staging down there. There's 52 weekends. That's it. And that was a really hard day because <laughs> um, we also got a lot of calls from town members who were kind of yelling at us for allowing it to happen. <laughs> they thought it was our fault. We got a lot of negativity from residents as well as just a bad, a bad day. Um, but I think what came up with the meeting is, is how do we justify saying it's okay if it's not our business affected but affects all the other ones that are open. It was kind of hard to say that, well, since I'm not affected, I don't care if the restaurants are. Nobody was really and, and support that somebody was going to lose out on one of their only Sundays out of 52. And, and one of the ways, and Rick, to speak to your point and that point yeah. specifically, one of the things that I didn't articulate very well yeah. at that meeting uh, that I tried to do more research on, again, was that I, we completely understand that. I don't want one business to be affected negatively. I wouldn't want mine to be affected negatively. But you have 90% less traffic. The seven businesses that are opening at 11 o'clock in the morning, well, even well, if we're still on the roads, well, well, are going to be dealing rather, with so Rather than much get less. back and forth, yeah. you know, and I, I, I'm just looking at the clock, and, and yeah, I, I think our decisions more or less. I think Paul's probably in your court, to use a cliche. If you want to sit down over the next day or so, think what you want to do, your options. Uh, if you have time, again, this is all your decision, to put together a plan B, touch base with the people we brought up and anyone else you can think of to you know, amend the application to back to us on the the, the second meeting in, in uh, May. I would suggest probably if you get the plan done before that, get it to us. You if, know what I mean? If, if, if it, and if I understand. can feel that we can actually register people with the security of, of having a budget for the race in time, which is really the main issue with not having approval tonight. Yeah. If we feel we can do that, we'll have a, an amended uh, yep. application to yep. Tricia as soon as possible. And if we can please be put on the agenda for the 25th, if, if, pending if you, if you could removal, get to us, we'll have that as soon as possible. If you could get to us as it happens, absolutely. Your conversation with the recreation, even if it's piecemeal, absolutely. just so when the night comes, we are pretty well prepared that you've done this, 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 and we're not going through the whole have you done this? Have you done this? Obviously, yeah. there may be things that do come up, but I understand. Can my understanding correctly that those are the main three points that that you feel at this point need to be addressed: the churches, rec, and the police, and Trisha's departmental uh, review. Yeah, yeah. Expand I mean, police to be departmental review. And if we think of anything else, well, and the feedback we get I'll from the citizens out. over. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just yeah. want to be clear yeah. because I. We, we can't just have another one or two things every time we come. No, it's just no that's, get why, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. why I'm suggesting get them to us. You know, Thank you. Know, you know, we get any things that we think is are important, we'll get them to you. Thank you. All right, thank you thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know what I'd like to do, if, I, if you don't mind, take a quick five-minute break just to stretch our legs. It's been since 6 o'clock for some of us, so it's close to 9 now, so... Five minutes, or we'll be back here. I'm sorry. Then we'll be on 14, Joe. We'll be on 14. Yeah, yeah. We'll be on 14. Uh huh. No. Are these mics off. Al. John. John. Are these off?
Yep. Uh, thank you. Call the meeting back to order. Uh, we're on, what, 14, I believe? Yes, correct. Uh, purchase of equipment, cable TV. Who does that, Trisha or Mary? Or John. No. Or John. Uh, John. It's all three of us. In Whoever room. knows. Um, as you know, the Cable Advisory Committee has been meeting, and um, so John has brought in our browser, our uh, cable um, person provide a list of equipment that he needs. Actually, some of the equipment that the town's been using, John has lent of his own. So um, we he presented this listing um, to the cable committee at our last meeting. Um, they were all on board with it. I had a few additional questions, which John provided me detailed information on, and I'm very comfortable with. Uh, hopefully this may be the second to last or maybe last time these kinds of things have to come to the board because we established a cable department budget in, at the annual town meeting for FY11. So um, that's sort of a broad overview. If you have a specific technical question, John can certainly answer it. <coughs> he serves on the cable committee too, so um, he might be able to as well. I just had a quick question. What Sure. Just what what is it? At, you know, it looks like a camera, a portable camera. If just a quick hit list of this is what we're buying. Yeah, the the, the, the basic idea here is that um, there's a couple things. There's the camera there. Um, that's the first item there, and then the card. Um, this is actually a tapeless camcorder. Uh, I actually found one at a very reasonable, in fact, very affordable price compared to some of the mini DV cameras and this actually has is a tape free camcorder and that's the first item the second item is the car that goes with it um, which is a one time deal instead of buying tapes over and over again by the one card you don't use tapes um, the second third item there is a tripod um, headphones um, I've been using mine um, there's a set that should go here this is such a thing should go with the camera and then also one for editing and one for some one if I eventually get help. That would be cool too. Um, and the microphones, these are mine from my fan days actually. <laughs> so those <laughs> needed to be replaced. Um, and the cables, secondary to that. Um, this item on the, the second sheet is is um, I've been I've been using a trial piece of software. The computer that I have um, needs a special program to run the access to the server um, it's actually at the school I do a lot of remote stuff because the actual server part is at the school so that's this software called parallels allows me to do that um, I've been just trialing <laughs> uh, for, for a few months um, the don't get us in trouble here okay yeah no no it's all good it's all good. Yeah. it's all legit it's all legit um, this that next item is this which is the libraries or that one one of these is the libraries, and so that's just a replacement for them. Um, I don't have access, I mean, I, I don't have a printer, and I print these, um, a lot of things, including these things, my newsletter, a bunch of other things. This, <coughs> the, the reason I picked this particular printer is because it actually has this cool feature that it prints directly onto DVDs. I've been, um, a lot of people have requested copies of these meetings and other meetings. Um, I was thinking of making a copy and leaving it at the library and giving one to Bernice that, you know, that actually has this meeting printed on it and all that stuff. The service contract is a one-time deal that goes with the camera for, for they highly recommended uh, something that would be public to have a service contract. And the battery's the last item. That's great. Thank you. One motion. Motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to purchase equipment for the setup of Situates Cable Television Studio in the amount of $3,671.06 per the recommendations of the Town Administrator. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all your work, too. Thank you, John. Uh, the next, L. Memorial Policy. Thank you. I'm here representing uh, four folks. I think Dave Ball's here. Mm -hmm. Want to come up, Dave? No, 
Okay. <laughs> uh oh, that's a bad, a bad sign right off the bat. When sure they don't a bad come sign. Headed south, Al. <laughs> no shotgun. She got all of the go. committee members up here when she was yeah. doing beaches, and I. Came <laughs> well, Kim was on the committee as well. She's nodding her head. No. <laughs> <laughs> come out from underneath the desk, Kim, please. Al, who? Uh, this topic, what we're, what we're here to dine is to suggest that the Board of Selectmen adopt an operational policy, a selectman's policy, for responding to citizens' requests to donate money to the town to place memorials on town property. Uh, frequently, the selectman's office, the DPW, the Historical Society, the Harbor Master's office, and other offices uh, in town receive requests to place a bench uh, or some other item on a favorite spot in memory of a departed friend or a relative. And, and, and uh, rather than dealing with these on a one-off basis, we thought it would be good for the selectman to um, develop a a method for dealing with this. And so to establish a coherent policy for responding to these requests, the committee uh, consisting of Mark Patterson from the Harbor, Joe Norton, David Ball, Kim Donovan, and I met to discuss and uh, develop a suggested policy. And that's all we're doing is suggesting to you uh, policy. The idea of the policy is to focus the proposed memorials on items and locations that first serve a public need, uh, number two, don't create additional maintenance costs. Number three, are rugged enough to withstand the environment in our community and, and public use. Uh, and then also uh, blend well with other town outdoor furnishings and lastly to meet the needs of the family who is uh, making the requested donation. So what we did was we developed a, uh, a proposed a policy uh, or, or procedure. Um, we developed a recommended set of locations, uh, standard items and their associated costs the, to purchase, install, uh, engrave, and ongoingly maintain these items that were donated to the town. The list includes items such as the town clocks, benches, trees, brick pavers, bike racks um, throughout town in locations that range from the Greenbush Village Park to the Lighthouse Point uh, to the Lawson Tower area, uh, Egypt Park, the Harbor Walk, and various other locations in Hummer Rock and Minot. The idea with the policy uh, is that the Selectman's Office, um, the, the policy states that the Selectman's Office will maintain a list of items and locations for the placement of memorials on town property. In other words, an inventory list of what could be done. Uh, secondly, individuals requesting a memorial uh, would complete an application which is available in the office of the selectman that Kim has developed such an application as part of your policy, which would include the desired location and the desired wording. Uh, then the request for making a donation would be placed on the selectman's agenda for your discussion and vote as you've done a couple of times in the past and in fact we're doing tonight. And then if the board accepts the gift, the money would be donated to be donated would be placed in a town's memorial gift fund from which then uh, the monies would be spent to uh, install, uh, buy, purchase, engrave, and install the item. Uh, the DPW would oversee the installation of this um, in the designated spots using the donated funds. Uh, any funds that were not used entirely would be remain in the memorial gift fund. A dedication plaque would be attached, and that would be coordinated with the family that was making the request. And then lastly, the Office of Selectmen would maintain a list of these designated memorials so that as time goes on, we don't, uh, they don't get replaced with some others, other one without uh, knowledge of the family that made the original donation. So we, we're trying to develop a, a standard policy for that, and that would be our recommendation. Discussion for the board? Just um, some yeah. observations. I noticed, um, uh, the, I noticed at the bottom here, was that Whittle's Walk, a water fountain? Is that what I saw written in at the bottom of some of the uh, suggested locations or items that I... That that's one of the things. Okay. Yes. I couldn't make that out. Just said something was walk. The only other thing I was curious about, Al, is whether consideration would be with the cast iron benches and plaques. I know with Front Street, certainly it's town property. It would certainly be beneficial because of the yep. downtown be harbor. Yeah. The benches are pretty. Well, what we want to do is um, we'd ask that if if a what we would coordinate with the selectman's office if a desire was to place one, say on the uh, on the sidewalk in down in the harbor it might uh, dramatically interfere with maintenance of those sidewalks or with passage or there might be a, a sight line blockage and so we would try to coordinate all of those so the placement was met the needs of the family if to the best extent possible 
And, and the other thing, I, I, Coal Parkway, I, I don't know if that was actually listed or not. I was just hoping. I know there's the Harbor Walk, but no, Coal that would Parkway be uh, that would be the Harbor Walk area and, yes. and, and bike racks in those vicinities, because right. certainly for usage would be helpful. Uh, you know, I have a slightly updated list that, that you don't have. Maybe that's uh, that's because uh, well, I've added to that list some input that I received from the selectmen about uh, various other locations, um, Hummer Rock Beach entrance. Um, yeah, I was going to say I appreciate the Hummer Rock Beach entrance. I know that the uh, Marshall residents will appreciate that. So thank also, you. I got a request for a bike racks. Is another one people would like to donate bike racks in around town, um, and that's doable. Yep. And uh, there was a request and a wording change, so I tried to incorporate those in. Thank you. You shall find out later. So, do you want us to vote on this tonight, or look at it, or you need to, uh, to decide, to digest it, decide what you want to do, and I guess. We'll Questions before we vote. Go ahead. Um, Al, we, we talked about this a little bit, and I actually forget the draft version that we saw, and maybe you've answered this, but, and you and I talked about this a bit, but um, responsibility to get permits. Sometimes I know when we were dealing with Museum Beach, um, we appropriately had to get conservation involved, and I just would hate to see where um, your office was, you know, uh, tasked with having to see this through. You know, permitting processes, and then the second thing is, I know it's a, a noble goal to have everything be non-maintenance or maintenance-free, but nothing is ever really maintenance-free, particularly when you're talking about a clock. And um, you know, it's a sensitive subject. On the one hand, you want to welcome people for making donations, but so it might be a little tough to turn right to them and say, "Thanks for the donation." By the way, you need to maintain it too. So there needs to be something, I think either in the policy or as backup material or something for future issues about the responsibility to get permits and, um, you know, maintenance. <coughs> Just so because, again, even a, even a bench, you know, a bench given and then 15 years down the road the bench gets knocked over or it falls apart, then a family member might come up and say, hey, we gave you this bench, why aren't you maintaining it? And they might have a point yeah, and all that. Sure. But I just. And it's always sensitive, so I don't, I don't know how to handle that. Well, I think uh, we could do either one of two things to answer Tony's question. We could either vote it tonight or digest it tonight and, and have it put on a, you know, if we have any yeah. objections or any thoughts one way or the other, come but forward. But overall, I think it's great because we've been dealing with this for a while. have any feelings? It doesn't matter to me. Either way. I'm, I'm prepared to vote. I, I, I am too. I, I, yeah. I say that only, I mean, I'm happy to wait till. I, I think it's great to at least to try to streamline people into an area of saying this is what the town would like to do if you want to yeah. do, an, do a donation yeah. in somebody's name, a, a I, memorandum. I, I think what we found, great stuff. what we found in the past is memorial. You know, someone comes in with a, I'd like to put together a little memorial and we find if motherhood and apple pie, that's wonderful, and we find out there's like Plymouth Rock or something, don't they, you know? Right, yeah. We try to avoid that, and I think this policy does that, so I think it's great. Tony, did you want to? Yeah, there, there's just a, a, a few um, uh, amendment that I wanted to discuss yeah. was um, the ability on, on the benches to be able to add some personalization to it as we can on the bricks. Um, th this, um, this application only allows you to put the person's name on it, and I was hoping that you'd be able to give, you know, the three lines and the number of characters for, that you're allowing for the bricks on a bench as well. Um, I know there's some concern that the potential that someone may put something on there that's inappropriate and maybe we can put wording in there that's at the discretion of the DPW director or something to a uh, board of selectmen to to deal with what the text is but um, but that's one one thing that came to mind with me we would have that ability to do that in this policy wouldn't we yeah. right um, and that's it I know you're still looking into the cost of some of the items so um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, do, I think the you know, ultimately the selectmen will decide if it's a, if they're going to accept a gift, and you know if it's uh, there's something that uh, what, what our ob objective was to try to make it uh, so that uh, the person requesting understands basically what will work well for the town and is, has a high probability the selectmen will think it's a great idea without any. Um, right. Second thoughts. But I like and the I, I like the thought that you have here that they're all going to say that this is a gift to the town of situated in memory of in the person's name, yeah. and then um, and you could add some additional blocks. You could, if you 
in the suggestion to the to the uh, donor, <coughs> this is what we we like to use. This is a standard thing, and if that's fine with them, fine. If they want to add teacher, love the ocean, something else. Okay. That, is that more or less your motion? Absolutely. Would that be an amendment to that? Yeah. Well, also the 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 big expense in these things is the engraving. Yeah. So you really can't put. You know, the Constitution on there. Yeah. You know, if you limit, you know, if you limit the number of blocks that you can use, then it really would, uh, you know, yep. limit the amount that you can say. So, so I'm I'm fine with this, and whether you take our at least my suggestions about the permitting and in, in the implementation or whatever, that's fine. But I mean, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Then we might as well it's vote it tonight happen. rather than bring it back. Let's yeah, I mean, let's just get some, let's get it done here. That's fine. Can I just ask one question? Yep. The, the um, clock in Greenbush, there is one there, so that you suggested. Uh, we, the, the one, as you remember, in North Situate was uh, donated chick, by a chick. citizens group right. for Chick Gates, and the one in Greenbush. Greenbush has not been designated. So if a person wanted to. Yes, if that uh, wanted to become. Memorialize yes, that. That's correct. They would pay. This amount of money, and I guess it's that would they actually the yes that would cover the cost of the clock. That's that's what the uh, cost of the clock in the donation in North Situ was that amount of money to buy the clock. It was installed as part of the project, and this is a comparable cost. This is the same cost. I had someone the approach clock, me, and it's the same did clock. Right. Did you make I did. Yes. It's not working. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Well, we wouldn't charge as much if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why the trains aren't time. It's, it's right twice a day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's, we? who's we that maintains it? Yeah. Dave, okay, you had your hand up that. first. Dave Ball I'll or the Norman? Tomorrow, Dave Ball, did you have the Norman? No, I didn't. Daylight savings. That would be able to handle not only the purchase of items, but the maintenance as well. Would you need a revolving fund? Uh, you know, I wouldn't. Most of the items are, uh, they wear out over time, but they, they're, they're not going to need ongoing maintenance. I mean, um, the, the money would come in and be put into a simple yeah. checking account, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, it's a restricted account anyway. Yeah, and then it would yeah. just be. And so it would stay there for a, that. Not a revolving account in the true sense of the word. No. But I, I think over a course of time when these things fall to pieces and they, they get changed that, I mean, they're not in perpetuity. They shouldn't be because then it turns into right. it turns into more of a, a cemetery type of you know headstone thing. I, it, when the useful life of the item is no longer useful, I think then you, you replace it with maybe yeah. another. And with all due respects to the the person who it's donated for, presumably somebody else is going to want to step in to donate in the name of somebody else who's come along. I, I yeah, think these items are uh, could be. Yeah. Well, that would need to be spelled out because. I would suspect some people might think this is in perpetuity. These, what we've selected are the items are are substantial. These are municipal grade items. They're not home garden type right. items. Um, they're fairly expensive, as you noticed, um, and and the cost uh, in some <coughs> cases anticipates that cost will go up over time. So we're not having to constantly adjust this. Okay, um, and you know there are some costs ongoingly of maintaining an item with you know whether you mow around it or. Chip in the base or whatever, but yeah. I think this would cover it. I think we got the, the gist, I think, don't we? Yeah. Sure. Great. Uh, David, now David. Yeah, the only comment I'd like to make is I, I think everyone that is making these donations needs to understand that what they're doing is, is giving the town a gift. And if something happens to a, a bench, it's stolen or it's damaged, the town isn't responsible for the price. Mm -hmm. That's almost given, but maybe it should be put in there by policy. Uh, Certainly should be explained to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's almost like the money is the gift, yeah. and the town is doing the gesture of yeah. Yeah. recognizing. Right. Further discussion? Uh, we have a, a motion. motion. Not that one. The, the, the Board of Slackman vote to accept the proposed memorial on town property operational policy as presented. Which Second. Can we include the uh, the ability to add more lines to the uh, yeah. benches? With the, with the ability to modify the inscription 
conform the as per our add discussion. To the, add to Thank the. You. So you modify as per our discussion, that kind of gives them blanket statement yeah. for some of the I'll things we discussed. So you can write it up. I'll second that. You Thank you. Just of it. Okay, the motion has been made. Second for the discussion. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Al. Yeah. Uh, drain layers license. Motion. Go ahead. Move the board select and vote to grant a drain layers license to Fed Corp 1039 East Street, Dedham, Mass. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have one other one, Joe. Uh, we do. Go ahead. Who that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the renewal of a drain layers license for Cobra Enterprises in Marshfield, Mass? Second. Uh, motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Mm, open and close special town meeting warrant. Uh, special town meeting to be held on May 17th. Time now is 921. Move to the Board of Select and vote to open the May 17th, 2010 special town warrant at 921 p.m. and close said warrant at the adjournment of the regular session of this meeting. Second. Uh, there's two parts of this article. We'll take care of this one first. Two motions, I mean. Correct. Uh, all in favor of Mr. Murray's motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? First, second one, second part. Move the board select and place two articles on the May 17, 2010 special town meeting warrant. One, acquisition of Pier 44, 44 Jericho Road, for a purchase price of $1.875 million. And two, a debt exclusion vote of $2.33 million for Wampatuck school repairs, all subject to further changes and revisions by town council and the town administrator. Thank you. Second. The motion will be made and seconded. Further discussion? I'll recuse myself. Uh, why not we, okay. We'll on the second one or the first one? On the, I'm going to recuse myself on the uh, second one. Okay. So uh, I'll tell you what. We, I take we that probably back. Don't I'm going to do it on the first one. I'm going to recuse myself on the first one. Okay, item. why don't we do this? Why don't you recuse yourself on both of them? We don't need the vote. That sounds fine. Right? Just so we'll recuse myself on both. Try to make new motions yep. and everything. Okay. Understood. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? With one uh, inclusion. Okay. Now that's just to put it on the on That's the just warrant. to put now it on the warrant. Yep. Yes. yes. March 17th. That was 17. Yep. Maybe you can show up with this one on since you were so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is the last one. Maybe you will have. We always make some kind of fiscal sense. We try to do okay, that all folks, the time. Okay, folks, it's 924. I think some, we're moving sometimes forward. Sometimes we don't. We've got great expectations, but we do our best. Uh, 18. 18. Discussion votes on the special time meeting articles. First of all, <coughs> uh, let me do Wampatech first of all, if I may. Uh, I'm on that committee. Uh, Bill Johnson was here tonight, and, and uh, he's also on the committee. These are repairs uh, which uh, have been necessary for a few years now at the Wampatec School, and they've been put off for budgetary reasons, put off and put off, until <clears throat> they're at a stage now where they're really, uh, particularly the boilers in the building, uh, which were deemed, I think, uh, unusable two years ago, and they band aid their way through them for the past couple of years. But now the contractors are saying it just can't be done any longer. We have to replace those boilers. So, and the other items are deemed by the school department to be uh, overdue and necessary. So that's why they've asked us to be put forth. This would have to go uh, on the town meeting warrant and then be followed with a town wide vote. How many weeks after, Tricia? Two? Well, actually, Three. you'll be setting the date for that under the town administrator's report. Okay. Okay. So basically that's that. And to the tune of 2.3 in that the neighborhood? Yeah. Yep. Two, just a few comments on that. I mean, you look at the age of the school, and of course this is what was said at the uh, last town meeting with the voc at um, uh, Vocational um, High School in, in, in Hanover, and that is that the building is built in the late 50s. It certainly needs to be revamped in order to continue its useful life. 
um, you need to think about continuing to update and maintain it. It's a capital investment that will make this building continue on for the next 20, 30 years, hopefully. The, you know, so you're looking at the age of the building. Second, you're looking at the numbers. It services a large neighborhood. You know, we talked earlier about the, uh, the water lines and everything else. It's certainly it's, it's servicing all those streets, um, the numbered streets and all the other neighborhoods on the backside. So it's certainly getting its use. And, you know, based on the um, reimbursement that we're getting from the um, MSBA, I think it's 42%. You know, so you're basically for one dollar, you're getting 42 cents back. Um, so it, it really is a, a necessary uh, investment. This is the time to do it, given that probably the rates are lower to be able to do it. So you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. Um, I think it's it's a great opportunity that we should take advantage of. Tony. Um, yeah, I mean, it probably makes sense to read read the yeah. facts on the, the piece of paper. Yeah, that, I just uh, wanted to, to, if I could first, Joe, to say not for the boiler in particular, which Joe mentioned, um, it will also replace tiles, complete the remaining roof work on the school, update fire safety systems, update the electrical systems, and replace the HEVAC system. Thank you. For a total of 2.33. Keep in mind those tiles are asbestos tiles that yes. they're going to get rid of. Whatever you want. Go ahead. Okay. I had um, Jane put together a summary sure. sheet. Yeah. Um, I think we got some valid questions about well, what's the impact to the tax rate, things like that. So before, before you get into this, if I could just uh, say I really hope this is a very nice summary sheet, and I really hope this gets out to the public and um, is really accurately described out in the media and, you know, all sorts of forms because we're, we're getting lots of questions about this, and it's just very helpful to have it out. So um, we ask for your help on that, Tony. Great. Um, the only thing I'd add to this is there was a Habib report done five years ago, six years ago. We started funding these, these uh, repairs for, I think, one or two years and then put it off for the next three years. So, um, so really no sub substantial work has been done on the schools for at least the last three capital plans. Um, and this is some information on some questions that we asked. Uh, the total cost of the loan is $2.3 million, um, and we'll pay almost a million dollars worth of interest on that, or just over a million dollars worth of interest on that. The rate that we're getting is 4.5%. Um, um, this is a debt exclusion, so it wouldn't, it will not impact, this is, Trisha, this is a debt exclusion, right? Yeah, it right. is. So, good. Um, so this will not impact the um, budget, the general budget or the interest on, in our general budget. Um, the impact, as it says here, for the total, the total impact on the taxpayer is um, $434 over 20-year period that the bond will be um, done. And this is based on the average single value home of $505,000. So that's a total 434. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, impact of a single-family home is highest. Uh, Mary, maybe you'll explain this a little bit better. So each year, th you put this together, right? Um, actually, uh, Keith Frazier wrote, and Jane did. And okay. Jane did. So the yearly impact of this debt exclusion on a $500,000 home is um, $28? Yeah, at the high, yeah. At the high, and it drops to a low of about $15 over. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's making your payments right. right. Good. Over the right. Period. And as Rick just pointed out, the average is twenty-one dollars and seventy-three cents a year is what will impact the average taxpayer um, for twenty years. Um, I think that's uh, the most relevant information. The um, <coughs> the only question I have: this is based on the full borrowing of the two point three million dollars. If we happen to get 42% of that back, does that go to pay down the note? Yes, it does. It does. So more than likely when the MBSA gives MSBA. us, yeah. MSBA, sorry, gives us the, um, the kickback on this um, project, then that will go down almost by half. So, yeah, and I'm not sure how SBA does the reimbursement, so they do it while we're doing the project. They, so they might actually end up borrowing even less than the 2.3 million dollars. Right. So these are maximum worst, figures. Worst case. Right, worst yeah. case. Bottom line is these are worst case maximum yeah. figures. So ballpark the average, if we get the money back, is going to be 
closer to twelve dollars a year for a five hundred thousand dollar home. <clears throat> Tony, can I just jump in for yeah. one second? Keep, uh, the same question, or the same. I'll make the comment that I asked the question of the Volk School by updating the heating system. How much are we going to save in energy costs? Mm -hmm. All right. So there's another yeah, minimum, probably ten percent minimum. And they've already done the windows. So between the windows and the roof, it's just it, the efficiency is going to be much better. So just as a side, sorry, yeah. jump. And that's no, that's great. And, and it's only for a twenty-year right. period. Then it's then the note is paid off. Right. Yep. In total. Uh, why don't we take that one first? Further discussion on. You know, I had one other point to make, Joe, as to why this is on this special town meeting. It would have been on the annual town meeting, but we didn't have the information in time when the warrant was put together. We didn't get uh, approval from the MSBA um, within the time period that we needed to get it on the initial warrant. That's the only reason that this is on the special town um, meeting warrant. Norman? Um, I don't object to this. Good, Nick. <laughs> What I wonder is, under the Habib report, we were supposed to put X amount of money into the schools every year to prevent these catastrophic overrides from occurring. And we started to do that. Wampatuck was in the worst condition of all of the elementary schools in the town, yet it received no money. The other schools, were, which weren't in that bad condition, Receive the money, and I still don't understand why. This should have been done years ago. You'd have to ask the people that made that decision, which went on us. Well, under the, under the charter, that's the selectmen's call to repair the buildings. The the selectmen are in charge of the school buildings. Since the charter and it should be from now on under the charter, the selectmen's call. The BB put and I'm not sure exactly sure of my dates, but was initiated before the charter reform. Correct. No. 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 Well, but Norm, the capital, right, Norman, the capital planning comes before us, and they meet with all the people. All these things have been on the, on the list for years, and they came to us and said, these are our most important issues, and that's what gets funded in the capital plan. It doesn't mean there's more things that are worthy on the plan that need to be done, but that's what came before the Board of Selectmen every single year. It's never been a secret that the Wampatuck School was in the worst condition of all the elementary schools. Mr. Time. Chair, if I, if I may, Norm, I think, you know, your point may or may not be valid. I personally think it's probably valid because you're usually right about a lot of these things, but we're moving forward here. And, I, I understand you know, that. so, I, I mean, we can't, we can't change the past. And but you get a school or, or a building in a, into a condition that gets progressively worse as each year goes by and you don't do the work that needs to be done. When you finally get around to doing that work, it ends up costing considerably more than if you had done it three or four years ago. We're aware of this, Norm. Norm, it seems like a contradiction that you're actually suggesting that we do Spend all the more. repairs to the schools <laughs> right. that are necessary. I'm saying we should have done it three or four years ago. Yeah, but you would have been the first one to stand up to say, you know, <laughs> why, why, yes, are you, why are you that. spending all this money? The discussion, discussion for another day. I'm sure we'll hear. I think we'll hear more from Norman on this subject as we as we go forward. The only thing I'd like to make about this, Mr. Chair, is. Is um, the only I like to make about this is is it's it's clear that you know there's gonna be, I hope going to be widespread support for this twenty dollars a year you know that's twenty dollars and I know every dollar counts in every everybody's household budget but twenty dollars a year to do all this a cup of coffee is a buck seventy. Don't go, don't go there. <laughs> See that? Rick, come can I, it's actually half. Yeah, yeah, you have a comment? We get the I know, yeah. and it's it's half that. And I just want to make it, you know, want to scale it out. I just, uh, I just am wondering if we're getting this loan, can we get up even a little bit more and do the other, like, eight that is having leaky roofs, too? <laughs> and some of it? You go, to, you go to them with the scope of a project, and they went to them with the Wampatuck project. Um, I know that we've put Gates project yeah, they're before. On the they're, on the they're on the list as well. But that's this is this project. They've looked at this project. They've approved this project. Yeah, specifically. Oh yeah. No, no, it's no. It's, it's, no. Right. It has to be used. 
All right. Uh, just a John. question, Patricia. Low bid. We have we, we have to. I mean, uh, every single town is usually end up fighting with their con you know when they build new schools. So we have to go with low bid for something like this. Well, actually, it's a very involved process with designer selection, and then um, MSBA has a lot more involvement now, and they have to approve whoever we select. They pre-qualify firms now. They have to approve that. Um, you and even whoever the architect who selected needs to have already gone through um, con public contracting and everything that the IG's office offers. So it's much more heavily regulated just Good. for the kinds of things you're saying, Good. Sean. Great. Thank you. It's not so a motion on the, you want to, do we want to do them separately or together? Yeah, we'll separately. I prefer separately, separately please. Yeah. Yeah. So the Board of Selectmen vote to support Article Number well, it'll be two. two. Yeah, it hasn't two. been put together yet, but it'll be number two probably. Article Even two. Even though it says number Article one. It'll be number two. Article number two of the special town meeting. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And now the Pier 44 <laughs> article. Uh, once again, I think this has been pretty well publicized, but We'll, we'll, we'll uh, discuss it again tonight. This opportunity came to us a few months ago uh, to purchase uh, the land known as Pier 44. Uh, we had a council to enter the negotiations uh, with all parties concerned at the, right before the, the foreclosure proceedings, uh, an agreement was reached between the bank and the property owner, um, which would allow us to purchase this piece of property for one point eight two five seven five seven five. Seven five. Seven five. Uh, I'll just speak my comments on it. It's 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 something I think from our looking at it. It's a very important. Uh, purchase if we're able to make it. It's waterfront property. We, we, we're a waterfront town. Uh, waterfront access is so important. So many towns throughout the Commonwealth, waterfront access has just dried up, if I could put it that way, with development and building. Uh, and any, any available piece of land on, the, on a hob or a body of water has been used for some sort of development. This would give us an opportunity to, to buy this land what we're going to do with it is still open uh, from negotiations with the MBTA. The money will come from the MBTA's uh, fund. We've met with them. They they uh, completely bless this plan. I think it's a great use of the money. Uh, I, for one, am in full support. So I'll go on from there. Tony? Yeah, the only thing that I would add is... Um Again, this is on the special town meeting because the negotiations went past the time period when it could be on the annual town meeting. Um, as Joe mentioned, we're suggesting that you purchase this with the MBTA mitigation money. That money cannot be used for other purposes. It has to be used for land acquisition, and it is, um, cannot be used for the budget, cannot be used for um, other uses. So we are kind of um, um, restricted in terms of what we can use for that. There's currently about uh, $2.8 million in that uh, fund. Um, in addition, that fund has a time constraint on it when it has to be spent by. And there's some debate over when that is. I got some information tonight that that actually time period is up quite shortly, and there's some question as to what the starting date of it. But there's definitely a, a limited amount of time that we can use that money. Otherwise, it goes back to the MBTA. Um, my personal opinion is um, I think there's a lot of pros about this property. I think there's a few um, negative sides, which would be, you know, that you're losing a piece of property that would, would generate revenue for the town. Um, I think that we can turn that, that property into something that can produce revenue. Um, and I think it's our role as selectmen to take this piece of property and put it before the town to decide. The town will ultimately decide whether this piece of property is bought or not. Um, it's a great opportunity that came before us at a very reasonable price, considering what it was purchased at before. And um, I think my inclination all along has been I support it, and I think it's our duty to, to bring it before the town to see what they, um, 
they think of this article. A question. Um, when we bring this before the town, is this just the town meeting vote to size this, or is this going about ballot too? Town meeting. Just the town meeting. I knew I wanted just to make sure people knew that. So this is at the special town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And to that point, the other one will go to the ballot. Yeah. The other one does. The debt the exclusion, ballot. if it passes town meeting, will go to right. a ballot to get um, approved there before the money can be used for Wampatuck. Tony said it best. I just look at this like we looked at, you know, you, Joe, with other board members, you know. Uh, developing Widow's Walk. Uh, well, mm -hmm. we bought it many years prior to that, but uh, Young's Boatyard. Yep. A few short years, select future selectmen will say it was a good thing. It may sound like a lot of money, but and then there's been discussion what we gonna, what are we going to do with it? We haven't really yep. decided, you know, but the opportunities here and now. And I think it's worth mentioning again that th this money that we're using to to purchase the property, again, cannot be used to balance the budget. It's restricted from the MBTA on what it could be used for. So that's, I think, important to get out there to everybody. And additionally, this does not affect anybody's personal taxes whatsoever, yep. other than potentially the loss of, loss of tax right. revenue from the restaurant, which hasn't been there, you know, for a long time. Typically, anyway. what was it, 12000 a year? Right. 10, 12000 okay. a year. Okay. So, One other um, point before yep. we... But I would just want to just follow up. I'm obviously strongly supportive of this. I've had a lot of conversations with people, you know, largely supportive, and the ones that are not supportive are, are genuinely curious. And when I talk to them about some of the things we've been bandying about and the process, I mean, we're not going to decide how to use this if it does pass town meeting. We're not going to go into the proverbial smoky back room and come back out and say, voila, this is what it's going to be used for. We're, we're going to be taking public comment, getting everybody's <coughs> input. I've already got some people's input. Someone came up to me and said, wow, you know, we've been talking about a senior center and a community center for a long time. What do you think about that? And it's like, well, that's a good idea. Um, you know, that's definitely some of the things that we've been considering. And there's a bunch of other ones that, you know, I'd be too, be too speculative to even mention right here. But these are the sorts of things that we've thought of and that other citizens have approached me and, and said, you know, how can we help make this property be good for the town? And, um, and, and there's any one of a number of ways, dual use, single use, or what have you. And I, I for one, am looking forward to hopefully the town saying yes on this. Uh, we're buying it with um, the MBTA funds, as these folks said, which we've already used. And we have a very nice list here of what other MBTA funds have used to really help this town, um, you know, a historic fund, um, doing the high school artificial field, um, uh, North Situate improvements, Greenbush Village improvements, these are millions of dollars, all totaling up to, you know, several million, 7.2 that, that the previous selectmen got from the MBTA mitigation funds. And these are, these are truly to mitigate the impact of the MBTA on the town by making our town a better place. And I think if the town owns the Pier 44 lot, or lots, and is able to put it to good use that benefits a number of different things, then I think this is a great idea. Okay. The only thing I was going to add was that part of the negotiations here, there's, there's a few litigation matters are still pending with these people, and those are all um, yep. concluded with this. Sessions. Excuse me? Subject of your executive session. Yep, subject right. to our executive session. What she says. So, um, okay. Can I mention that or no? No. Okay, well, yep. there's other things. I, just, I spoke, Sean was so nice to call me back. I'm Deb Larson. I live in Situ at the MPA 44. And I was talking to the bank. Um, and they told me before the auction that the town was interested in buying Pier 44. And I figured, well, it's great. They must have a lot of money. <laughs> but um, my vision for Pier 44 was to maintain the integrity of the property, to make it a wellness center. I own the day spa that is down the harbor currently. It is a wonderful location. We bring people in from, Beverly. you know, my clients come from all over. Not, I would say more than 50% of my clients are from outside of Situate. They never realize that Situate is as wonderful as it is. Pier 44 is very near and dear to my heart. I worked there when I was a kid. My husband worked there. Um, we went there every Friday night to the back bar until they closed. 
What I was told, and not officially, I wasn't told this officially, when I was trying to do my due diligence, like I said, Sean called me back. Um, I did talk to, you know, I went to the, uh, you know, the um, town administrator's office trying to get information to see if this was a viable thing. What I heard from not anybody in an official capacity was that there's too much litigation on it. If you were to buy it, even if I were to agree to a deed restriction to maintain the footprint of the property and only do a two-story building and have it look like a summer cottage with porches and that there's no way you'd either do what the town wanted is either a restaurant with no liquor license or a 40 b That's what the only two things. I, 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 would, suggest, I would suggest that the, your sources, so yeah. they may have but been. But they said because it's operated by special variant for the restaurant, mm -hmm. and the town does not usually, because I did, I hired yeah. a lawyer. I, I mean, I've invested you know, money it, into it's, it. it. That's kind of a zoning question right, you're zoning asking. Question. That's right. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think our options, that I think you've heard this, are wide open on this, you know, as much as we could do legally. But know. what I would have liked to have had the um, opportunity to do was to be heard and to have, um, you know, have the same discussion that, okay, if the town is going to buy it, I understand they're getting money from the um, MBTA. MBTA. What are we going to do? Is it going to turn into an eyesore? We have no idea. I, we would hope. What I would vote, and I'm telling you, I want it with. I want we w that we would absolutely hope. I mean, the, 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 even the thought that, that the town would in this, ever think about turning it into an eyesore is, you know. No, not turning it into an eyesore, but if it doesn't, if it's, it, it's already beginning to be an eyesore yeah. because it's not maintained. That's well, part of the what reason I'm we're saying, buying it. Yeah, yeah, what I'm saying is, is now we're pulling it off the tax rolls. You're buying it with money that is, quote, free money, sort of, and but you don't have that extra money to develop it. And how are we? How can we, as taxpayers, say yes? We we'll vote for the town to buy this piece of property and no longer get property taxes, not have any revenue come from it, and then not have the money to build it. I we don't. You don't know. We don't know that there's not going to be revenue coming from it. But I would support, there, there, but see, that's there are the a number of different I, things that there are a number of different things that we're considering, and we would be remiss, you know, with all due respect, we would be remiss to come for you right now and say this is exactly what we want to do with it, right. because we need to get feedback, we need to get input right, from and people. And that's what I'm trying to do. But the thing is, is if you have the money to purchase it, mm -hmm. which is great, mm -hmm. then there is because I had you know architects, I had sure. surveyors, I had people looking into it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money that's going to need to go into that to make it something that can, you know, like I would love it to be a community center. I right. would love it. Right. It'd be, you know, and I understand, you know, what my vision was, but it was, I guess I just felt as though nobody in the town wanted to hear what my vision was. They wanted to, they said, we're going to buy it because it's going to end the litigation. That's what I felt. And then if I were to buy it as a, as a business owner and make a business, then there could be more litigation because Pilata wasn't allowed to. You know, with, with, all, with all due respect, the litigation never really came into our decision. I mean, we want to buy that land because we think it's a, an excellent piece of property. To develop it. We will buy it first, and then we will we, we will find the money. We don't even know whether it will be developed. We have no idea what it's going to have. It might be open space. It might be a park. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it will be. Like hopefully, hopefully we'll. Space, I'm thinking Goulston. That would be yeah. a prime property for the town to buy if ever. Well, ever. you know, there'll be plenty of time for this discussion about what we're going to do with it. Right now, we just voted to put it. We may, hopefully, our intention may very well be to be a revenue source. We just you don't know. You're asking a lot of the town, the taxpayers of the town, and I'm not. I don't mean mm -hmm. yep. to sound disrespectful. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yep. I'm not no, yep. You know, I I appreciate the work that you do. But do you think that you're putting a lot of um, what ifs in a situation for us to vote on as town? And I really, I have no problem paying my taxes. I love situate. I'm, I'm a townie, and I love situate. I have no problem paying my taxes. I have a problem with the town buying property that with quote free money. But then in a year, almost like what, Jen, what happens with Jenkins School? You had the money to build the school. I said there's no operating budget. What's going on wait, with that? Wait, and then it couldn't you, open. I just had to jump in here. No. Deb, do you think it's worth buying it, tearing it down, putting grass and park benches there? No. 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 
I don't. The money is, you just heard him, the money is not going to be available in a very short time but is frame. Is there other properties that are more, like I think of myself as is wanting to preserve the properties in situate, maybe surrounding our reservoirs. That Goulston property, that is going to be an albatross around our neck. If they ever were able to develop that, if the town could buy that property, because if, if Goulston land was developed, the, the apps would be flooded out forever. You know, and, and I, I know that it's yeah. jumping from... Let me just, let me just uh, you're, you're asking some very good points, and I have no problem at all with you asking these points, because people are going to be asking these in the future, and it's really good to get these out. But you let are me asking let me, people to go to this But let me just, let me answer your question, if I may, okay? Um, one thing, and I can't get into figures because I can't remember them, but, no. you know, just, you know, off the top of my head, this is 1.875, and I bet Goulston's a heck of a lot more money than that, if it were even available, which it's not. Okay, so these are discussions that people have and have had, and we're moving forward in the direction we're moving. You've heard, because you've been here all evening, and you're obviously astute and you care about the town, and you've been listening to what we've been talking about for a while. You know, with the school department and with us, we're looking for every single nickel we can for helping the schools and helping the rest of the town. This town is the most well-run fiscally, I think, due to the work of the Financial Forecasting Committee, our new town administrator, the Board of Selectmen, individuals like Tony, and the department heads and everything like that. So, you know, when you say, you know, can you guarantee that it's not going to become an eyesore, or how do we know it's not going to become an eyesore, I guarantee you it's not going to be an eyesore. We are not going to put 1.875 and acquire something and let it run down to the ground. Now, the flip side, and I completely understand, we are asking for your faith, in fact, we are. We're asking for the town to trust us to, to, to develop or, or enfranchise or, or implement this property after we buy it. That's exactly what we're doing. We're asking for the town's faith on that. The flip side of that, though, would be even worse, would be for us to say we're going to buy for 1.875 and we want to put A on it. We either want to make it a park and that's what it's going to be, the heck with your guys' comments or we're going to make it a community center. That's what we've already decided without any input, and that's what it's going to be. Vote thumbs up, thumbs down on that. Or we're going to keep it as a restaurant and sell it out and make it revenue. Thumbs up, thumbs down, decide on that. That would be awful, and we would be very, very criticized and appropriately criticized, if I may add, for having made the decision amongst ourselves under executive session or whatever, okay, um, for this is what we're going to do. I mean, I've been a selectman only for four or five years, but one of the things you probably are aware of is, along with you know fellow board members, is we want to get town feedback. Right. We want to get citizen feedback on this. But there's and been so very we are not we are advertising about you know there's been very little in the paper about what actually is. I exactly. The reason the reason for that is, as Mr. Vignani just articulated, we only closed the situation so recently we couldn't even get it onto the annual town meeting warrant. Right. We tried really really hard and we missed by a number of days. Right because we wanted to yes, do that. I, when I was talking to the bank, they were one point, you know, they said that... Whatever, and that's, that, that's million, not, whatever that's is, not immediately germane. The thing what I would feel better, and I think a lot of people in town would feel better, is if you purchase the property for X amount of dollars and said, okay, we have this, um, we're buying right. the land, it's going to be open space, but we do have a kitty over here, and I know that it's, maybe it's unreasonable to think that you could do that. We do have something to either, you know, tear down the building or build or, or, or refurbish it or do whatever it is, if I knew that there was money, because a community center, I think, would be great. A senior center. Wasn't there money voted years ago for a senior center? Right. We have, maybe but, but we are not. We are not. It. We are absolutely. You're, you're absolutely spot on. We are not. Whatever we decide with this, with townspeople involvement and town departments and, and a whole community discussion many, many times, we are not. They're not going to let us. I mean, good financial guys like Tony here. He's not going to let us say, well, we're going to do this, oh, and then by the way, we don't have any money to maintain it. I mean, I, I bang on Mr. Banger here all the time when we're talking about, you know, this little pocket park here and or what we're doing at Marine Park. I say, well, are you building in, and I, and I tell Tricia, are you guys building into your budget to the maintenance of this little, you know, granite bench? And this is going to be, you know, granite bench El Grande. Right. And, and if it's agree. a community, and, and for example, you know, um, other things, and I, again, I am not you know, saying this is what I personally want or what the rest of the board wants or anything, but things in play, and you've mentioned a community center and stuff like that. Maybe we end up selling uh, Brook Street because we've got a brand new senior center here, right. right? And so there's where some of the resources could come available. Or some of the other things we've talked about, you know, moving town departments and all this sort of stuff. So every single one of these things is in play. But see, what right? I, my, my, th my problem with it, and, and believe me, I support it 100%, 
because... Good, we're going to ask for your vote. Well, you know, the, the only reason why I was buying it was to maintain, I would consider buying it, was to maintain the integrity of that property. I would be sure. mortgaging my soul to do it, but I did get the funding. I did, I was, I right. would be able to do it. Right. I, um, you know, and I feel very strongly about that piece of property. Yeah, sure. I would feel better if... If we have more information, it's, it's almost like the carts before the horse. If you, you know, build it and they will come, yeah, maybe, but you know something? Now you, you, do, you, haven't, you haven't exhausted all options because you haven't said if a private person were to purchase it, would you make it so difficult, not you, but would the town make it so difficult to change the variance to away from a restaurant. That, that's a legal issue that that's is, is issue. that is not I mean, germane here. But see, I just think if you're gonna buy it, I would support it if we had some money to do something with. If the town had money to do something with it. Well, see, as a as a regular citizen, sure, I would not have gone and hired a lawyer and gone to the bank and got my funding and done all of that just for the land. I was doing it. I. I in my planning, I planned for the land and for to to make the property what I wanted it to be. As are we. Okay, but that's see, see, and that's what. Right, and I, then again, again, I just say I we say couldn't it. even talk about this because of the because it was an acquisition under executive session, under appropriately under executive session for, um, you know, uh, you exchange or purchase of a value of real property. About it, like. If but it's but no, but, but 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 please don't interrupt. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could not talk about this at all legally outside of executive session until two weeks ago right and then within 24 hours of this thing being inked and i think that's accurate maybe it was 36 we issued a press release so we got that out as fast as we possibly could mm -hmm. we could not entertain public discussion public comment public public input public output public side put we couldn't do anything but now and now we are in our very first you know with, with all due respect our it, very it, first public meeting here we are talking about it it's, right. it's running on a little later right. than, and that's than right. I just wanted yeah, to, the and I appreciate it I'm not trying to cut you short but there are other, you yeah. other people to develop it or do something with it not develop it but clean it up mm -hmm. make a park make a community center do something because there are they, there are people who are business owners who are not going to build a 40b there who would be interested in making a really nice, my philosophy was a wellness center, a spa sure. and wellness center. It just seems like it would be such a nice place right. to do it. All I make, can tell you. You know what, buy it and then rent the land to make Well, all I can promise, <laughs> all I can promise, all I can that promise you. That may happen, I mean, who knows? Yeah. All I can promise you, all I can promise you is that whatever happens, it will be done in a fiscally responsible manner. In public. Because I know, and public. I mean, my, you know, my and in public. plan, my vision for it was going to be, and now, mm -hmm. you know, I have another piece of property that I'm looking at mm -hmm. for that vision that's not even in situate, unfortunately, which I would like it to be, but it, it would really bring a lot of revenue to the town. Thank you, Norman. Um, Thanks for your comments. I assume the mitigation agreement still holds and is still in force. Uh, I have the mitigation yep. agreement for pages that deal with the funds. Yeah. 6.7.4 of the agreement calls for $3 million to be used for the purchase of open space for conservation purposes. Only open space for conservation purposes. It gives you no money to tear the building down. It gives you no money to pull the parking lot up. We have it gives you no money to build a park. We have, we have had uh, discussions with the MBTA uh, town council is in contact with the MT MBTA and we feel that the MT we're in agreement, or the MBTA is in agreement with us purchasing that property. And under, keeping in mind what you just read. Including and I won't get into it too deeply because they're still in negotiations. Let me just read, read the rest of it. 6.7.5, streetscape improvements, 2,500,000. It doesn't qualify as streetscape. No one said it did, Norman. With all due respect, you're reading stuff and you're putting things out there that just aren't germane. The streetscape has nothing to do with this. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The next fund you have available to you is a project uh, for Boundbrook Park. 
Nothing, to, to, nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. Norman, it's, it's the open space. I'll save you from going Norman. through all that, Norman. Listen. I'll save you from going through all that, all right? We are, we are intending to use the MBTA open space mitigation funds money with, the, with an understanding and negotiations going on right now with the MBTA on that. You're rewriting the, the minutes. <coughs> I'm, a, I'm not privileged to say what I'm doing, what we're doing. I'm not doing it, but what we're wait, doing. Wait a minute, we can say. No, I mean, it's, Well, we're uh, going to vote at town meeting in a couple of weeks. And you can ask that question then. We and legally and, have the money or not. We will oh. know by that time whether we leave. We ha legally have the money. We, we feel, have full confidence that we legally have the money after negotiations and talks with the MBTA. I feel very secure in that. And we will have a document to that effect uh, shortly. You will, you will have a rewrite of the mitigation. I didn't say that. I said we would have a document. We will have a legally right. approved document based on our conversations with town council <coughs> and town council conversation with the MBTA personnel who are authorized to, to authorize us to do this. The MBTA has been involved in these discussions. I can't get into any of the confidential issues, obviously, but we would not even be here tonight if we did not have MBTA approval to do so. Specifically Robert. regarding that paragraph. Barbara. Just, just a couple questions. <clears throat> I, I'm not for or against Pier 44 purchase, just more just trying to get information yep. from things that people are being asked. Um, you're asking for the citizens' faith, and I think that that's what Rick had said. With this public input process, do you have any sense for what the public's input will be in the final decision. So there will be input in the vetting of ideas, but what would the public's input be once there's three options? Whose decision is the final? That would be the Board of Selectors' decision. That's, that's going to be a big one. Um, and then as far as the time frame running out, if, if I'm hearing correctly, there's 2.8 in the fund now, 1.8 about mm -hmm. is being used, which obviously sounds like a great price. That leaves about another million dollar. If that time constraint is up, what other properties are being considered? I'd have to check. Tony mentioned that time constraint was up. My understanding was it wasn't up till after <coughs> the project had been signed off on. I wasn't yeah. aware We're that. I'm not it. sure when, when it is up exactly, yeah. but it's somewhere between November and three month, three years from November. Yeah. There is a clock on the project. Um, it's not and it will go away if we don't utilize it. I think one of the big questions that people have been asking just again at soccer fields, everywhere you're going, is what other land acquisitions, you know, knowing that this money was there and knowing that the rest of the money for all these other um, mm -hmm. articles that Norm mentioned have already been spent, there must have been other options that have been coming along all along. I think people are just asking, what were yeah. those? Yeah. Not, not to make any incorrect or correct decisions, but just what were they? What we have a list. Uh, Trisha gave it to uh, me the other day. Um, it could be a three. We spent three point seven million. I could be off by a oh, little. No, I'm sorry. Not on any of the other money. All just this one. Just on open space. Just the open space. We right. spent money on open space. Yeah, over three million dollars in the past three or four years. And we've looked at other properties yeah. too. No, yeah. I think that's just yeah. what people. Yeah. This is a. Yeah. But you can't. You this can't. this is a hard thing for me because I like being as open as possible. But we've. We've studied other pieces of properties that, for 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 whatever reason, didn't work out, either for technological reasons or for uh, access reasons or seller changed mind or price reasons. We've we have been diligently looking at lot. I know, no, but I want. I just want to make sure people get that because you're asking a really valid question that I've been asked as well, um, and you know I can't tell you exactly which ones, but we've been. We've been really looking. Because I, I don't think there's, you know, I haven't been hearing as much support surrounding this as I would like to hear. And I think the more information we can get out between now and the Maytown meeting, good information. That's right. Well, that's why I, support. that's why I thank the woman for, you know, her comments because we need to get these out because now finally we can talk about it. Norman. Uh, another piece of information I'd like to have out there is how much money the town will lose in revenue from the fact that the possible no <laughs> I think we figured that someone just mentioned it tonight I think it was around ten or twelve thousand dollars a year that's what it was that's approximately I think what the taxes were on it don't hold yeah, me to that they haven't been paid for yeah, haven't been they paid haven't for, been paid 
but that's the number. Before you're not going to let that money go if it hasn't been paid, I hope. Don't, that's, don't, we're doing our best, Norman, to, to be fiscally prudent and get that money. Building a what? Building on that property? Uh, you know, right now, probably, I'd have to say no, but we're having discussions with the MBTA, as I said, so. You're, you're discussing buying it for something. <coughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we're having discussions with the MBTA. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none. Motion for support. Have we made a motion? No, we have not made a motion. Move to support Article 1. Second. Of the special town meeting. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next. I just, before, sorry, Mr. No, I just want to thank everybody for asking these questions because these are questions that people are asking. And keep them coming and please help us get the word out. Thank you. Uh, the next item I think that I see here. Acceptance of gifts and memorials on town property. Um, Do you like a motion? Let me just see. Do I have to recuse myself? Uh, what is it? I'm giving the gift? Yes. I think so. Do we want to hold? Okay, yeah, a motion. Move the board of and vote to accept as a gift to the town of Situate a memorial bench to be placed on town owned property in North Situate adjacent Five, to Glades Road and facing Mine at Beach. I'll second that. Further discussion? I think I have to recuse myself. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abbott Day Proclamation. The, the editor's version. That's <laughs> <Mr. laughs> the chore of being a clerk. Um, <coughs> I have everybody's attention. Arbor Day Proclamation. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoils by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are renewable resources, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas our town increased property values, enhanced the econ economic vitality of business areas and the beauty of our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, or a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas the town of Situate has been recognized as a Tree City USA, or probably Tree Town, more aptly put, USA, by the National Arbor uh, Day Foundation, and desires to continue its tree planting practices. Now, therefore, we, the Board of, the Situ uh, the Board of Selectmen for the town of Situate, do hereby proclaim April 30th, 2010, Arbor Day and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, we urge all citizens to plant a tree to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Signed this 30th day, actually, is it 30th or should, should it be today, actually, the 27th day? I'll put the 30th. Day of April 2010 by the Board of Selectmen, Town of Situate. And I might add, I've already planted a tree. I hope the rest of you have. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you probably shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> He's cutting them around. Thank you. <laughs> um, report the town administrator. Yes, it's verbal, but I have two rather important items related to the discussion you just had about town meeting the Warren articles. Um, as I think was previously discussed, the Warren article for the Wampatuck School is a debt exclusion. So um, you need to schedule a ballot election. So you need to set the date for the election for that. Mrs. Brown, the town clerk, and I have gone over the um, possible dates to do that. Obviously, we want to have it as soon as possible, given that um, people go different places during the summer. Um, and it is my understanding that elections are generally held on Saturdays. The town has never had an election on a weekday. Um, 
due to Memorial Day, uh, the date of town meeting, uh, a time when Mrs. Brown will be out of the office. I can propose two dates to the board right now. Um, there's considerable lead time for an election for specimen ballots to be approved and Secretary of State's office <coughs> registration. Those two dates are Saturday, May 19th or Saturday, May 26th. June. 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 I'm sorry. June. Whoa. Sorry. Okay. Well, Saturday. Saturday. What? June 19th or June 26th. Probably think that the, the 19th. Part when does school get? When does yeah, so the it's between the two of them? Yeah. yeah I think it's the 23rd or something. I may be away on the 19th. No, that'll be July. Of Just the election. Yeah. Huh? Just yeah. the election. You can do that. Yeah. Absentee. I'm finding the date. Take a pick. I'm fine with the 19th. How about the sooner the better? Yeah. Do we need a motion? Move that the move that the board move that we uh, establish, an establish an date a, for the debt exclusion. Establish an election date for the debt exclusion of uh, June nineteenth, two thousand ten. Second. Second. Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Um, and the second piece of information relates to Pier forty four and just in general about getting information out to town meeting members. Um, the agreement that the board executed for the acquisition of Pier 44 requires us to buy the property or close uh, 30 days after the date that that agreed, 60 days after the date that that agreement was signed. So that is May 30th. So um, I think, you know, I really uh, sympathize with the number of questions that folks have that are unanswered. Unfortunately, some of the details that we want to share with town meeting members are still not finalized relative to the acquisition of the property. So while the board is trying to be responsive to the questions, they are legally bound not to at this point. But that being said, and Tony and I had some informal conversations about this early this week, is we really want to have a meeting before town meeting that folks can come to ask any questions they want about these two Warren articles. It's, again, unusual that we're having a town meeting so soon, but as timing dictates, it's just that we have to seize the opportunity to do that. So what we're planning is to have information on the website and in libraries, but also to have an evening, um, if the board so approves, and this is why it's part of my report as a recommendation to you, to really start to answer some of these questions. Um, there is one point of clarification I do want to make people aware of is the opportunities for private acquisition of Pier 44 are extremely limited and the town does not have those limitations in acquiring the property for a public pur purpose. Um, and to also underscore the fact that all the questions you have are very valid and the board has considered all of them and is aware of them and um, it's not a case where we're entering into this and are going to find out we can't do it. It's just that we're not at liberty to disclose it right now. Hopefully we'll be, we will be in the next week or two, but the meeting that if the board agrees that we will have, we'll be able to provide that information. Um, so again, I recognize the challenge in it and the board did the best they could. We're not trying to withhold information. It's just that at this point, we just can't. But in a week or two, when we have the meeting before town meeting, um, we could address all these questions. And I took notes of some of the issues tonight. So really, that's my question to the board, is maybe to set a date certain that we can work around so the staff can begin to put together materials to address that. We can work with the school on Wampatuck, because mm -hmm. they've got all the information they needed to submit to MSBA. And we, at that time, can have all the information on Pier 44, what our options are. And, um, do both articles the same night, same meeting, town library maybe town or someplace? Library, right. Towns typically do this. They call yep. it a pre-town oh, yeah. meeting yep. or no, that's a baby right. town Good. meeting. That's great. That way, if someone has a real good suggestion yep. or a question that we don't have the answer to, we can provide it on the floor of town meeting yep. that night. Yep. Good. Fine. So, we so a uh, date on that. Uh, 7 o'clock at night in the, at the basement of the library type thing? Yeah. On a weeknight? Yeah. Um, I would guess. Sure. I mean, we got the special town meeting itself is on the 17th, May 17th, which is a Monday. I think we need time after that to make sure we have all our ducks in a row. We want to make sure we have this meeting, try to hit that sweet spot to give people plenty of time to make sure we have all the information available that we can discuss, well, but also have it preceded enough. Hmm? Thursday, May 9th. That's 
There is no Thursday, May 9th. Monday, May 10th. One week ahead. It's only a week, but we want to make sure that we get all the information. You know, we don't want to have a meeting and still and go there and not no, have. That's what I mean. Yeah, so let's give. I mean, May first is this where, week. Where right? are we now? <laughs> it's the, the date today. The <laughs> April twenty seventh. Friday. Yeah. So I mean, May tenth, I think, is in the realm of possibility. What day of the week is that? Monday. 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 That works. We have a selectman's meeting the day after that, so that could be a good quasi follow up. Is there a school committee meeting at this point? I don't know. I'm just wondering if they might want to be there for I think they'd have to be there for Wapitech, Wapitech. yeah. They have a meeting May third, I know. Do they meet weekly? We have Do to they set meet it weekly? Right Do now? they have a meeting no. May third? No. We're all here. No. Okay. Trish, but it's can, a great we, can we look at our calendars and check this stuff and then post it by tomorrow or something? Or do we have to set it right now? No, if you don't want to set it right now don't have to. You can just, what you can do is endorse the concept and yep. then email me what date works better. Yep. I'll do consensus and check with the school. Um, and then. Let's do that. Let's do that. But I mean, I do want to plan around Our getting notice out to folks. I can do the 10th. And then also put something on the website if we can get questions in advance so we can even address no, that too. I'm not completely sure. I didn't bring my calendar. So why don't, yeah. if you would do that, you just okay. I'll throw out some dates. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll That's make a great. motion. Good. Do we have to make a motion to accept? So I'll make a motion to accept the concept of having a pre-town meeting, meeting to discuss meeting to discuss the Warren articles and other pertinent issues. Second. Great. Make sure a motion remains and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, other business? 22, right? 22. Other business? Uh, oh, this is there's the, a flare. Thing. Trisha, there's this about the uh, affordable housing trust. Oh yes. Um, oh, that's number. So the town accountant needs board of selectmen's approval on affordable housing trust purchase. Okay. Why don't we do okay, that? Move now. the board of selectmen vote to support the affordable housing trust purchase of 11 Nelson Road, situated Massachusetts, for. $253,274.41. Second. Discussion? So is this a purchase from the Housing Authority? No, this is a purchase from the Housing Trust to purchase Trust. Um, a, a property that's on Nelson Road uh, that has been under an agreement and ultimately to close um, this Friday. And is it a single family home? It's a, it's a duplex, but it is a three bedroom home. Yes. And you're going to turn it into? It's, uh, it's going to be turnkey. put it, We're going to create a, uh, a lottery for um, preference towards situate residents <coughs> that will uh, be turned into affordable in perpetuity. One unit or two? I'm sorry. <coughs> it's only one, one of one the unit. two units of the duplex. Great. Outstanding. How old is that, John? 10 or 15 years old? It's about 20. It's, it was built in the late 80s. All right. I'll mix it up with another house. Yeah. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, now other business. Anyone that wants to start? John. Was, oh, are you? Yeah. Um, I just was going to say that um, a couple of weeks ago, it was a uh, it was a sign up that uh, the Recreation Commission had, and it was a uh, free boulder safety course. All right, for free, and. Uh, Two weekends ago, A.J. Ford and Eddie Gibbons put it on. It was a weekend-long event at the library. And I, I, I went to pick up my son. I think I saw your grandson there a few minutes early. It was fantastic. It, was, it had to be 30-plus people there. And I, and I left there thinking, if those people remember one thing that they suggested, it, it could make, the, make a huge difference out on the water. I, I just I think it's great. I, I want to publicly thank those two guys. Uh, great job and a, a great event for the recreation to be able to put something like that on. Awesome. That's all. John? Um, given the time, uh, no, I don't. I, I was going to address this water issue, but I figured um, I'll let it go. Okay. Rick Murray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I only have one thing. We. Um, we accepted a gift a few agenda items ago, and I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that the, the gift is actually <coughs> being provided by our own Tony Vignani and his wife, Anne, 
uh, and it's for a, a granite bench up at Minot um, in, in memory of, of Ann's mother, Tony's uh, mother-in-law, the late Louise Ann Doyle um, Bullock. And uh, I just wanted to draw attention to that, Tony. Thank you to you and Ann and your family and our condolences on your loss and to your father-in-law. And uh, Louise was a, a heck of a gal. And uh, this, this, is a, this is a good thing. And uh, he also duly used the form that we just approved earlier on. So uh, this is a good thing, Tony. Thank you very much to your family. Thank you. Um, Tony? Yeah, I just had, uh, well, two things. I'll read the, the thing Kim asked us for. Um, please announce that the safety flare and fire extinguisher demonstration to be held at Situate Marine Park on Saturday, June 12th, is being held on that day, and the rain date is Saturday, June 19th. More information as to the time of the event will be available soon. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to bring up is we, we got a letter from um, the town of Marshfield in terms of the beach stickers, and um, and I understand their concern in terms of the, in the rates going up for the Marshfield residents, and I don't, I, I know we don't have an answer right now, but I, Trish, I'd like to ask if we can maybe discuss it, you know, put it on some sort of agenda for that committee to discuss and have the selectmen discuss at a future time to uh, just vet out the, uh, the issues and their concerns. Uh, obviously, we value the relationship with Marshfield um, very much in terms of all the services <coughs> we get from them and they give to us um, and we give to them. And um, it's a big, a big issue to them and I think it just should be discussed a little bit further. Um, so is that uh, a reasonable request? I don't know. We can do it in a kind of a subcommittee and come back or meet with the actual commission that put this stuff together. Does that well, make sense? Why don't, if there's a, uh, why don't we, just a suggestion, why don't we ask the committee who put these uh, regulations in, these fees in, to meet with one or two of us and explain their, you know, to, because this issue came up, explain their rationale in getting there. And, would that be all right? Fine. Yeah, that that would be fine. I I, I um, the, the the letter I don't want to address for frankly because I think it it, it will be could be incendiary frankly. But um, I, I think certainly giving a response would be adequate to say the least. And my reference to water is I think in our response we should address the issue of water of of the cost that we end up paying. But and I, I don't want to get into it. Right. They're two separate issues, but we'll, we should at least, like you said, discuss it and, yep. and, and uh, respond to the memo. Would you like to meet at some time, Tony, with that group? Uh, sure. We can. Okay. Anyone else, of course, is welcome, up to three members. Okay. I'll um, be happy to meet. John's number two. I'll be with you, Tony, on that one. Uh, <laughs> next <laughs> is... <laughs> We had some correspondence. correspondence. Yes, Mr. Chair, there is uh, a letter from South Shore Habitat for Humanity to, uh, David a uh, dated April 5th, 2010. It's addressed to you, sir, and it says, Dear Mr. Norton, I'm writing to you and your fellow selectmen to express South Shore Habitat for Humanity's deep appreciation for the support you have shown. On behalf of the Board of Directors, staff, and volunteers, we thank you for your collective support of Article 22 on the annual town meeting warrant. will pave the way for Habitat to build a much-needed house in situate. The neighbors on Stockbridge Road have been helpful and supportive, and we are thankful for that. We will build a quality, simple, decent, affordable home. We are also grateful to John Allen and the uh, Affordable Housing Trust and look forward to working <coughs> alongside uh, the Situate Affordable Housing Trust. Thank you for your steadfast support in our mission of building homes in partnership with deserving families. Uh, sincerely, uh, Jerry McDermott, the Executive Director. Uh, John, you want me to help you with this one? South Shore Habitat for Well, Humanity. we're going to summarize it. Yeah. We'll summarize it. We're gonna yeah, go right ahead. You've been reading a lot the Arbor Day thing. Um, quickly, we got we got a letter uh, to addressed to Al Bangard um, from Dale. Is it Barrig? Is it Al Balog? Um, and basically, they just commended the um, um, work of two uh, people in the department in terms of bending over backwards to really help this this patient who has. Um, just had back surgery and can't do lifting type stuff. And it was uh, Nicole and Heather, Heather, Heather? Yep. Um, in the department that really helped this person at a level above and beyond um, this woman's expectations. And um, it's just a, a very long letter praising everything that they did. So, um, and then Nora. Al, Nora and Heather, Nora, Nora. 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 
Nicole's good too, but Nora and Heather. Okay. Nora <coughs> is butchering this. And then uh, a letter back from Al um, to Mr. Ballag um, in response to that. So uh, kudos to the two of them. Uh, next is the minutes. Move that the Board of Select and vote to accept the minutes for April 12, 2010. Huh? Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, we will now be going to an executive session to consideration, purchase, exchange, lease, value of real property, and pending litigation. We will not be coming back with any, any votes of a session. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Norman. Yes. Good night, folks. Thank you. That's your